everybody, welcome back to 3D6 Down the Line. We are continuing our Mega Dungeon Crawl of the Halls of Arden Vool by Richard Barton using the Old School Essentials system by Richard... Oh, no, sorry, by Gavin Norman, uh, Necrotic Gnome. <laughs> I am the referee for the evening. My name is John, going around the horn. As always, we have... I am Gorand, the Halfling Slayer. <laughs> fourth level dwarf. <laughs> I am Anne Weir, the tangent bringer. Uh, <laughs> third, 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 third level illusionist. I am uh, Matt. I play Avaricius, the <laughs> the left hand of Lysion, um, who is a fifth level cleric. Mm -hmm. And I'm Ted. I'm playing Mortus J. Gobliano, the doorbreaker. <laughs> and uh, uh, now a third level goblin yes. so we gotta do a little hp roll for that thing, we John. certainly do yeah so we have the whole crew together for a very and very important episode we're bringing to you here yes. at this is a line. very very special <laughs> one yes. uh as it, assuming that violence breaks out this will be the great battle of the debouchement uh, <laughs> so I didn't quite trip off the tongue like the Battle of Hastings, or, but yeah. we'll, we'll take oh, it. It'll, give it time. Give it time. It'll catch on. People will make memes. People make memes of this day. <laughs> uh, it um so it is the 18th of Ligario, so It's about 4:30 in the afternoon. Uh, violence is impending. We have the troops of the Wine Dark cohort uh, being led by Nicasia Duca and Gorn Blackhood waiting outside on the southern end of the pyramid of trying to avoid prying eyes, waiting for their signal to attack uh, down the pyramid and into the debouchement while the recon party, which consists of Avaricios and Onweir, sorry, Gorn and Mort are actually outside with, uh, with the Wine Dark cohort. The scouting party, Onweir and Avaricios have dived deep with uh, the Dalton's Darlings plus Samantha the Red. Um, down into the Dalton's Darling's secret entrance and have come down to this level in the northern part of it. And they are trying to make their way towards where they think the halflings are. However, they've been stymied uh, immediately upon d descending to this level because uh, they discovered that Dalton's exit was actually a one-way door and they are not able to uh, enter that way anymore. So now they're kind of going in blind. And last we saw them, they were going through a zigzag corridor down to the southeast when they heard the moaning of what they as can only assume are undead. Um, and that's where we sort of left it. Now, uh, first things first, though, we have a very important role to make, as Ted did say. So let's get uh, Ted's dice up here real quick. Do not roll yet, Ted. Uh, yeah. Mike, I need you to change your name on Albert to the correct name. <gasps> Mike, yeah. how dare you? All right, Ted, we are ready when you are. This is Ted's third level hit points for our All group. right. Sadly, he still has a con of eight. Although, as we all know, that's better than a con of five. <laughs> con five, baby. Con five. All right. So uh, this one's for you, uh, Argus. <laughs> See it. Oh, oh, oh it bounced oh. off too. Argus, you bastard. Oh. <laughs> he heard you all the way from Dolmanwood. Oh, so that's a one, okay. right? So I, I'm afraid that is a lousy one that I get yes. there. Ted, yeah. Ted rolled a two on the die there, folks who are listening. Oh. What yeah. is your total, Teddles? Uh, that puts me now at, I believe, 10 hit points. Hey, man, you hit double digit. <laughs> yeah, man. Double digit. <laughs> old Mort singing and dancing. Oh. All right, old Mort, baby. Okay, so uh, f uh, first thing that I remembered from last time, I want to make sure that Gorn and Mort are aware of this on, on the outside of the pyramid, that uh, the normal time to descend the pyramid is six turns. And that's right. go that's going at a dungeon crawl sort of speed. However, if you want to run, I'll allow you to triple it. Um, so that'll reduce it down to two turns. But that's the fastest you can possibly go. Right. Uh, that's like bolting down the stairs as quickly as you possibly can. I, I don't like that. It's noisy. That that hallway is going to be echoey as it is. So I think what our plan was, was that we are going to start and we are going to get maybe about halfway to maybe two thirds of the way down the stairs and then we're going to wait for the uh for the signal to go right okay so what what is your signal to actually start that descent 
uh, when I go blind. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So, right. Right. Because right. yeah, we we've timed it out so that we figured that um, with the uh, with the rings, uh, the pair of rings that we have, and the cloak. Now the cloak gives us a minimum or a maximum of three turns, three turns of invisibility. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're going to go simul simul invis- invisible. So they'll know as soon as he goes blind because he turns me invisible. Right. I have to be the instigator. Right. Then uh, he'll know, oh, I'm blind. We got 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Right. And if, if that. If, if, if Goran has to turn Avaricio's blind. No, no, no. He, Goran goes blind. I turn invisible. No. I'm sorry. That's what I mean. Goran uh, is the instigator. I, Goran... have to, I have to instigate it, Matt. Yeah. So I have to make myself go blind to make you go invisible. Right. Which means that we need to mm-hmm. go Time down in. the stairs a certain distance, which is fine, and then sort of say, "All right, well, we've given them some time to get into position." Right. Now let's. So maybe what we want to do is actually just do it at midnight. You know what I'm saying? Like, we could do it that wait. way, or we could say, "Look, as soon as we get to like to the gate, we just start our attack and we make them." invisible and they just wait until right. they go invisible and then they move see i had that's what i had always thought is that being in the mercenary group like we would draw their attention exactly and thus they wouldn't be paying attention to the guys like you know backdooring them yeah. you know so, so yeah i think matt and on we're wait <laughs> on matt going invisible we're the trigger right okay and i also think that i should make i should make them go invisible because you should be commanding your mercenaries that's fine, but if you're going to be invisible, then you got to give me the pin. <laughs> you know, I'll be I'll be blind because you won't be able to use it anyway. So you might as well let me uh, use Laryl's pin. Yeah, to smite half. Oh, never mind then. You can be blind, and I'll use the pin. I like the no, sound of that. Oh, you have ten hit points. <laughs> you got ten hit points. You big okay, man. Okay, okay, yeah, that's, right. that's a good point. That's okay. a good point. I'll, I'll take the ring. I'll give it back you to you. Take pin. Okay, so just so the and audience has got the cloak, and Matt's got the bag. Yes. Yeah. So just be aware that what they're talking yeah, about right. here is the rings of uh, friendly defense. Uh, so mm-hmm. uh, one person has to be the instigator okay. who suffers an effect while the uh, the other person who's wearing the ring actually suffers a benefit. Um, uh, so that is a, the key to their plan here. Uh, on is also wearing Laryl's cloak, which allows him to turn invisible. Uh, okay. So that's what's going on here now. I want to uh, make sure I get a sandwich out of that bag before you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, you yeah. There are plenty of sandwiches. Don't you worry. Yeah. Uh, the, o- the, the other part of this, like, uh, is what will break that invisibility. So if I cast a spell or oh. if I attack, that right. invisibility goes. So right before midnight, I've got so, I've got some leeway because silence lasts a while. I'm going to cast silence on uh, on weir. Right. So that he's going to be our little floating bubble of of quiet because I got to do that before I go invisible or it'll break. Right. Okay. Wait, why midnight? Because it's only 430 in the afternoon. Because we're hoping the halflings will be sleeping. Yeah. Okay. so maybe now is not the time to go down the stairs. Too late. No, that's why we're uh, Yeah, we're going to wait. No, no, no. We're talking about the dwarves, the, the mercenaries, John. Okay. So if it takes an hour to go down all the way, we will start our descent at like 1030. Guesstimate, right? Because we don't have clocks, right? There's no iPhone to tell me, you know, set an alarm. Right. So, you know, like we're just going to have to make a guesstimate, you know, midnight, you know, about an hour before midnight happens. We're going to start our descent. Okay. So here's the deal. Uh, we, we're going to have to move forward with it. We had we had time to sort of get, hash out the plan, but we've got to kind of move on it yeah. now. All right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, one thing that we do have to make clear um, is uh, the rules that we're going to be using for uh, the skirmish rules. Okay. So uh, I want to give a shout out uh, to an uh, unbelievably really cool free PDF called "Buy This Poleaxe." This is uh, by Chris Katalik, uh, who is a OSR luminary. Hope I'm saying his name right, but he's best known for having written the Hill Cantons uh, series of uh, hex crawl modules, which are amazing. Oh yeah. Um, but um, uh, "Buy This Poleaxe" is a really short and sweet, uh, like three-page skirmish rules, specifically skirmish, like small squad-based um, combat that is compatible with uh, BX D and D, which is basically what we're playing. Um, it is not meant for mass warfare. So basically it's perfect for what we're using. I did do some uh, tweaking a little bit to it. Um, not everything sort of measured up the way that I wanted it to, um, but very briefly so that 
uh, you as viewers uh, and as listeners are aware of the stakes at play. Um, what we're working with here are squads basically of five men. Okay, so we have uh, the Wine Dark cohort has four squads. Then it has two squads of um, of heavy infantry and two squads of of uh, crossbowmen. crossbowmen. The Darlings themselves, should they get involved in the heavy fighting, will also be a single unit. Okay, even though they don't have quite the numbers, right? So, um, so all of those squads have their own stats. The uh, stats basically are. Uh, uh, attack value, AV, defense value, uh, DV, morale value, uh, movement, and then hit. Uh, it's called hit to kill, which is basically the number of hits that it'll take before they die, like hit points, basically. So for the values, like attack value, defense value, morale value, you're basically rolling a D10 and you're trying to hit that number or lower on the D10 to succeed. So if uh, the wine dark co cohort, for instance, the footmen, they have an, uh, an attack value of five. So they would have to roll a five or lower on a D10 to succeed. If they uh, do that, they apply a hit to their enemy. The enemy then has to make a defense value roll and succeed at that. If they do succeed, they do not take the hit. If they fail, they do take the hit and they then have to make a morale check. Um, so that's basically the way it works. Uh, you can, uh, PCs can attach themselves to squads and give a bonus to AV. They can help rally. Um, spells are have been abstracted to uh, to how they would, uh, how offensive and protective spells would actually affect large groups of people. Um, and we'll play it out from there. However, be, uh, realize that if a PC, if one of these four guys is attached to a squad at the time a squad is uh, determined to be out of the fight, which means that they've lost all of their hit to kills, um, we would roll randomly to determine on a chart, which is this chart right here. You guys can't see it, but uh, the viewers can. Um, in the upper right there is the out of the fight table. We would roll to determine what happens to the squad, but then depending on that result, that would also determine which happens to the PC. Death is on the line. It is a small chance that the PC may die with the squad. Uh, so just be aware that uh, they are just because they are the protagonist does not mean they are the heroes. <laughs> there is no plot armor. I mean, basically, given our plan, I think the hero thing might be stretching it anyway. <laughs> yes, exactly. Murder. <laughs> um, but we'll see it all on play. It basically moves in phases similar to OSC combat. Um, and they, the PCs themselves can actually uh, uh, fight normally, like with normal OSC combat rules, should they choose to not attach themselves to a squad and actually go after a, uh, a leader type. Um, they could, uh, we would just slot that... Uh, that desire to do so into the normal phases of the skirmish rules and it all works really seamlessly because it was made for bx so big props to chris katalik for for creating this uh, awesome and free pdf i will link to it of course down in the description below so you can enjoy it yourself because it is pretty darn dope it's uh, it's almost like he knew we were going to go murder halflings i know right uh okay you so enough time, do you think um also, a uh, quick shout out to Nachi Braga on Twitter, who uh, asked us to ask me to shift the PDF a little bit so that the uh, part of it that is uh, the part of the map that is actually where the action is happening can be seen by you viewers. So I did so and I managed to figure it out, um, which is good. Uh, so you guys can kind of see that right there and how that map lines up with Ted and Matt's excellent map making. Can you just put that up for us there, John? Is that... I'm afraid not. Yeah, if you could, um, with all the secret things. Uh, so sorry. Because we haven't seen all of those yet, and that would be um, yeah. helpful. Okay, so I'm let's... just thinking very tactically here. You know. <laughs> let's switch over to Albert, actually. That way you'll actually be able to see how it matches up. Right. Voila. Okay, so uh, let's get on, let's get to it. So do, do we want to cut real quickly over to the scene outside the pyramid? Is there anything that Mort and Gorn want to do? Well, I would just say, um, Mike, uh, and this, I just want to ask, like, maybe we don't want to just stand around the pyramid entrance, or maybe we do. My first thought is we should, I know where we can hide and still be able to see the pyramid entrance. There's that mm -hmm. opening we found the other day. Uh, we could just lurk there until it's time to go down. But on the other hand, maybe if we surround the pyramid and any halflings come out to go get sandwiches, we just kill them and so, save ourselves some work later. If you had been here for our last session... Right. You would know that we are sheltered in the lee of the pyramid to the south and to the east where we cannot be seen by the guards. Anyone at the oh, shattered head? Right. 
And we're waiting at the bottom of the pyramid so that we don't stand out like a bunch of guys in armor and plate mail just hanging out on top of the pyramid. So right. I don't know about lurking in a building. That to me feels a little dangerous. Yeah. But who okay, knows? No, like, I, 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 I just want to hide part. there and then we're just going to go right up and then go right down. And um, right. if everyone sure. wants to just like get cover, like like hide, like or, you know, cut down branches and camouflage ourselves. And that's cool, too. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So we're not yeah. invisible to anyone approaching from the east no. or the south. No. Just from the inn and the guard tower to the north, basically. Exactly. But I also okay. figure that with the rubble and with all the overgrowth and everything like that, it's not like it's it's a clear open field. You know, there's right, right. Okay. No, I, I buy it. I like it. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And I say we uh, we let the the sneaky sneakers do their thing. Go on, guns and Averone, get in there. <laughs> okay. So real quick, actually, um, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, so. Uh, so that Mike and Ted players aren't left out. Uh, Gore, uh, Mike was actually playing Samantha the Red. Um, Ted, would you like to play Yost? <gasps> oh my god! Wait a minute, that's on the table. I want to play Yost. Too. <laughs> I want to play Yost. <laughs> you can no, play that's that's right. Right. Yeah, to play Yost. Uh, no, okay. that's some bullshit right there. That's like that's not cool. Well, you guys can. <laughs> maybe i ought to play y'all then john how would that be <laughs> you can, oh, yeah, well it, uh, yeah i don't want to cause no hard feelings amongst my teammates <laughs> no go for it brother oh we're, my we're god i would love okay. to have ted play yost are you kidding me be yost, man. Be, do it yeah, do okay, it okay so uh just give me but it gives me give me, uh, give me one century. second here folks we're just going to drop out for a second while i get ted hooked up with yost we'll be right back Okay, we're back, and Mort uh, Ted has morphed into Yost. I am Yost. <laughs> okay, so right now it's Mike is Samantha the Red, uh, David is on where Ted is Yost, and Matt is Avaricios in the scouting party. So you have you've been stopped by this door, and uh, so Dalton's dollarings are behind you, right? So you got Dalton right next to you guys, um, and then there's Helga, the really tall, whiskin, uh, blonde thief. She's been, she's really beefy though. Um, there's Helia Gabalus. There is um, Yvette, the cleric of Debelaton, right? And um, uh, and Yost, right? So th there is no Isidore anymore, right? Um, although, oh no, he's here. Yeah, he's, he's here. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's uh, technically upstairs, but you know, well, parts. Of him. <laughs> yes, we did retcon that uh, Gorn managed to take the head of Isidore from uh, from the uh, inn uh, before leaving. So now. Um, you had exited through the door to the south, and uh, you saw that there was this zigzagging 45-degree um, corridor going down. But the moment that you actually entered through that door and shining your lantern forward on it, um, and I have Avaricios with um, actually a torch. Mm -hmm. No. A torch? Yeah, I, I had a torch. Yeah, a torch. You got three, three turns left on that torch. You heard low moaning coming from um, the there are some openings, some very small openings, about like three feet wide in the western wall of the uh, of the southeastern sloping quarter that you're going now, right? Like you're that you're that you're in. So you guys are right around uh, right around here. OK, and there's there's openings in the wall. Yeah. So there's like tiny little openings about three feet wide basically evenly spaced on this wall right here. Um, and you hear like a uh, coming from there. And you know that the quarter uh, uh, takes a jag to the southwest, about uh, 10 feet down from where you are right now. Uh, but you have not uh, shined your lantern like all the way down there yet. Like something like that? Uh, yeah, but evenly spaced on that wall, basically. Like, are Did there five or six of them or? There's two, just two. Oh, sorry, just two. Sorry. If oh, I didn't oh, say two, sorry. Yeah, yeah. And do they look constructed, John, or like tunneled out? Uh, no, they look constructed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do they look like a catacombs, like a bed in a catacomb where a corpse would be laying? No, it's literally like like a like an opening, like a, just okay. a straight rectangular opening that you could walk mm. through, but it's very very narrow. Mm. Um, it's oh, just for okay. Um, who is what is the marching order, by the way? Um, let's let's not like intersperse the darlings, right? Like, let's keep the darlings either like in front or in back. Mm -hmm. But but how are you guys like arrayed? 
Um, well, I, I think um, with the with the light, I think I would be um, I'd be up front. Okay. Um, and I think I would uh, uh, take once we hear this morning, I would like you know take a couple of ste- steps back, and I'm like, listen, um, there might be some uh, uh, you know some of the uh, people of the undead persuasion right here. You can hear the moaning. I might be able to turn them. I don't know if this would just destroy them or. What I worry about is if they run away, they would run down south and they might give things away. Mm. Okay, what do you guys? You, are, yeah. Is the whole party up front with Abrisios? I think yeah, I think he would have like taken a, a couple of steps back to like say over his shoulder, like you know that morning up there. No, I, what I mean is is yeah. is it is it the AV club up first and then the darlings behind or the darlings yes, in front? And, yeah. Sounds okay, to me like I that's be, what we're doing. I will be there. I will be there with this little one-handed man. Okay. Hey, I've, I'm sorry, I'm, you know, I've been working out. I'm sorry, but uh, I know you look very slim and trim. I think, for for simplification's sake, the the characters embodied by the four of us should be up front, up front. Up front. Yeah, and anyone who is an NPC is behind us. I think okay. it's the way to do it. So, but I having need, said um, that, my character will be last in the line of the four of us. Yeah, I think, <laughs> that's, I think that's fair. Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, Yost, I need you to uh, roll me a d6. Oh, here we go. Yost does? Yeah. Yes. Crikey. Okay. That's uh that's ominous. <laughs> uh, I'm sure it's fine. I rolled a two. Okay. A two so, is what I rolled. So a uh uh you guys were Everest is talking about like I might be able to turn them, like what we should do, sort of thing. And then uh from the darkness beyond those that's those small little openings, a withered hand shoots out. Yeah. Right, and basically tries to grasp at you all of a sudden, and uh, uh, Yost, you are surprised, and it gets a free attack. <gasps> and Ted got Yost killed in the first three minutes. Ted! Of him. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, oh, Ted. That's a nat 20 right there. Uh, oh, no! Uh, that's okay, this just means it's a solid hit. Uh, so, let's see. Ba, ba, ba. Uh, I would like to file a, a, a complaint. This is oh seven damage against Yost as oh. it 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 basically grabs you. Let's say it like grabs you around the neck and just pulls you right towards the the wall and basically slams you against the wall. So you crack your head and you're like throttled um, as it just gouges a huge amount out of your neck, Yost. Wow. All right, minus seven. Okay. Um, but then it, but then the, the it, it basically does that and you crumple to the ground and uh, the, the, uh, the arm retracts into the wall and you just hear like a, like a, a more excited, oh, oh. um, and like, that more, makes it worse. You see, they're happy like, about it. You actually see like four hands sort of like emerge at different heights along that slit, yeah. like coming out, just rawr, grasping at you. Um, it's up to you. They do not seem to be able to get out. But if you'd like to uh, and join them in battle, you can. No, no. Uh, is, would, would it be feasible for us to chop it a hand once it poked out? Uh, sure, but that would require uh, initiative if you want. Uh, no, think... no. My intention is not to get in harm's way. My intention is to see a hand poke out and go flop. <laughs> right. yeah, if, if you're in melee with it, if you're in melee with a yeah. hand, then then there is a risk, which is why yeah. we have to. Yeah, let's not bother with that. Well, yeah. also, yeah. If what we could do is let me let me see if I can turn them. That would make them retreat, and we could get through. Sure. Hopefully, you way. want to turn? Let's do it. I do that. I would like to turn. Okay. Turn around every now and then. <laughs> you have a beautiful voice. Uh, you sing like an angel. Okay, roll 2d6, please. All right. I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to roll. <laughs> well, that's a three. Oh. A three total, okay. but you're a fifth level cleric. I am a fifth level cleric. Uh, So... It's all good. Um, so yeah, you hold oh, forth yeah. the holy symbol of Lucian, and uh, the you hear like the moans turn to shrieks, and the claws like splay out, and then like immediately retract, and you hear like a pattering of, of feet, and just like oh, 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 like uh, dissipating oh. into the distance. That's for hurting. That's for hurting my yost. Nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> I love that. That's sweet. All right. Yost is pretty jacked uh, up now, right? Like, oh, Yost, what, 18 hit points for Yost? 
Uh, yes, Yost had 18 hit points. Okay. No, he's no, got no, less now. Not too bad. He still has more than Mort. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's fine. No, he doesn't. Mort's beat yeah, him by does. one. All right. So uh, Dalton's like, um, you, you, you handled that quite well. And Yvette, Yvette kind of looks at you like her arms cross. She, she's like, nice one. <laughs> I've, I've been practicing. It's no big deal. Uh, perhaps your god has a little bit more discipline than I thought, she says. Uh, so, okay, uh, you move on? Yes. Yes. Okay, so turning around it's that corner to the southwest, you can see with your lantern light that it extends uh, in that direction to the southwest for 20 feet total before uh, before writing itself to continue on southwards beyond your torchlight. Something like that. Uh, you got it. Yes, and then it okay. uh, then it goes directly south from there. Right, but we don't know how far yet. Okay, yeah, so let's, let's yeah. move up. Okay, let's go find out. Um, let's see here. Da, da, da. Sorry, give me one moment. Take a look here. All right, so there is another small slit in um, that looks into what appears to be that same room, close to where the where the jag happened, like where where it cut down to the southwest. Okay. Um, same kind of thing. Yep. You still hear the moans coming from there. You don't look into the slit or anything like that. No. Okay. Well, actually, I'd be curious if like, there are they low to the ground? Is that the idea? No, they're they're. They're literally just open, open passages into the room. Like a vertical slit. I right. Guess. Yeah. yeah like it, a, if we held the torch up in such a way, could we look in without actually being in arm's reach? Uh, yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. You would have a narrow field of vision. But yeah, like if you stand, worth, if, if you stand back, you know what I mean? No, I yeah, could. Worth to have, to have, of, go ahead. Well, I just think it'd be worth, you know, at least getting a sense of what's in there. Uh, so we, you, you, you shine your torch in. You're standing far back. You can see that it looks like it's like the decrepit ruins of what once used to be a barracks of some sort. However, in the midst of those ruins, in the middle of the room, there is a wooden chest. And you see beyond that chest, against the far wall on the western side, there are two scrabbling figures who are, uh, they're basically like scrabbling at the walls and like there's blood like leaking and streaking on the walls from where they're basically uh, uh, trying to claw their way out of the room. Somebody bricked up the guards, man, and left them in there. That's pretty crazy. Now, are these these slits too narrow for us to get through, or could we? We could squeeze. It's three feet, right? We could kind of squeeze. You could squeeze through, yeah. Uh, does anyone have any kind of uh, missiles? Like they, they're not going to come closer. Can anyone like, you know, hit them from a distance? Stay on target. Well, we don't want them to give us a hassle if we have to leave this way. And we also have until midnight. We have got we've got a little bit of time to kill. I just don't want them to come back and screw with us. I mean, I mean we're unable like, to see an exit out of that room. Is that right, John? Uh, not but once again. You're standing far back, so you're not in range yeah. of the things. So like you have a very narrow field. So right. yeah, you, okay. you'd not see one. From where you are. Yeah, but it's probably like a twenty by twenty room or something. Not sure. You okay, can, you may be able to derive from your map, but that's all you. I mean, if it's a diamond shape, it's probably twenty by twenty does beg you question of where the exit or entrance is. You want to go in or not? Side. What's that? You want to go in? If you, I mean, if, you if you put your nose right up to the to the to the opening, you could get a full view of it. You know that the Actually, yeah, if they're still trying to run away because they've been yeah. turned, Yost wants to borrow that torch and he's going to look inside and get a much better view inside. Sure. Okay, so basically um as you kind of peer in, we'll say you're at the southernmost uh entrance there right on the southwestern jag and you look in, it's actually a rectangular room. It is, uh, uh, once again, going by the hypotenuses here, but it's um, it's 20 feet on one side and approximately 15 feet on the other side, diagonal. Um, so basically the, the long, the long uh, side of the room is on the southeastern jag there that you guys were coming Oops. down. Does that make sense? It does. It means that I need to do. So it's kind of parallel to that. Uh, that. You got angle. that exactly right, Ted. Well done. Okay. Can I see a door? 
Uh, you do not see a door, but you do see as you kind of poke your nose in there, you can see the other exits that led out to the southwestern, you know, the, the southeastern leading corridor. Right. Um, yeah. And it's just, uh, it's just we... ruins and like awful just sitting around and like these zombies are clawing against the wall. And there's this chest right in the middle that looks like pretty beat up. Looks like it could probably well, guys... be kicked open. Yeah, can't get everybody with a, 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 a missile weapon just like shoot through the slots at the guys while they're trying to get away. Who has a missile weapon? I don't have one. I've got a two handed sword, though. And Yost is not very wise. He might uh, go in there. <laughs> the darlings have like at least they have like a sling or something like that if you want them to do that. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I have I have the shrieker sling, but I don't want to make that much okay. noise. So what I'm going to yeah. say is um, uh, that they were totally willing to do that if you asked them to do so, and um, that, that this whole thing will take a turn. Um, and yeah. there is no combat. They basically, they, they can Let's just waste them and get the chest. Yeah. So they waste them and like, they basically cave in their skulls with a uh, well-placed sling bullets and, pff, uh, and they collapse to the ground. Just like, you know, just leaking blood onto the wall. You step through. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna, you also climb in. Okay. Throw it at the ready. If there's something else in there. Doesn't seem to be anything else in the room. It smells pretty bad. But it, but most of the detritus is mostly like wooden and stone. Uh, Yost, uh, check the floor in there for those uh, for holes. Like check the walls and hole. There were spikes and poison things before. Remember those? Those are pretty bad. You want to no, do? I've forgotten. I have forgotten the spikes and the poison. All right, so I will there. look at the floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like to be sneak up cautiously, kind of probing ahead and testing. And, you want to take a turn uh, to, to check for traps? Is that, what, is that what I'm hearing? Basically, yeah, just to like see if I can find a clear approach to the chest. Okay, uh, you Without certainly can, it, 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 but you're being extra careful, so it's going to take a turn. Yeah, uh, but you, yeah, you, you move some stuff aside and everything like that, but you don't see anything untoward, and you get you're at and the then, chest it's in the center of the okay, room. Okay, so Mort's equipment list is really short. He has. A sword. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, he doesn't wear armor. That's his weak point. He has like yeah. a what a, a twelve AC. Uh, uh, eleven. Eleven. He has a dex bonus. Uh, happen. Yeah. Um, but that's okay. So he's gonna use the tip of his sword. You know, sort of see if he can lift up the the chest lid. Uh, yeah. So it looks like it's it's pretty beat up, and you can see that like the clasp is excuse me just kind of hanging loose. So you pry it open. No gas or traps or anything like that kind of just kind of opens up very sort of unceremoniously um and uh you don't you know you're at a distance do you do you go over and take a look i'll peer in okay for sure in. there is a number of just um like paraphernalia and like loose cloth and stuff like that that seems pretty useless but sitting on top uh there are two interesting things one is a uh, a jasper a jasper gem Nice, nice. It yeah. looks like it's worth about um, 125 GP, which is pretty sweet. Yeah. The other thing is something that you've never seen before, but you probably have an inkling what it is, and your eyes light up, Yost, as you see it. It is it pants. a single <laughs> six inch perfect square tile. <gasps> it, it, is, oh. it is made out of blue glass. It's quite beautiful. Wow. Ooh, ah. Ooh, ah. Like like a teleporter tile? I who knows what that is. This is like great in my bathroom right now. <laughs> well, yeah, you just wouldn't know. <laughs> but so, yeah, we're uh, very interested in the little yeah, tile. You, like interested. all of the Dalton's darlings are basically like peeping over your shoulders right now. They're just like, whoa, yes. Um and uh Helio Gablis is like literally like shaking with his hand on your shoulder like that's it it's one of them i know it it's one of the activation squares we've been searching Ghost for will, so long dalton do you see it yes Yost I'm, will, uh, I'm glad we searched this go. room with them yost, yost, yost hand, it, oh, hand it over yost hey oh, Amir, Amir, is this hold those on. things <laughs> you were talking about Amir? <laughs> you showed me one of these before very cool is this the one on yes, i'll have a look at it my dear yost <laughs> Grandest friend of mine, new and best. Which one do you give it to, Yost? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're both just standing there, like, "Come on, Yost, come here." <laughs> uh, uh, 
I have Laryl's cloak on, so I think I'm probably a little more convincing is all I'm going to get at. You know, that's I'm probably, saying. yeah, you know, I, I buy that, actually. <laughs> I buy that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, he will uh, take the uh, the tile and he will hand it to Anwir because, <laughs> because he feels as if he's been possessed by some sort of foreign entity and uh, uh, is not acting as he might normally do so. Well, all the do- the darlings are sort of besides themselves as they see you kind of do this. And, um, Dar- uh, you know, Dalton just sort of smiles, but Heliogablus is like, Yost, I thought we were friends. Mm-hmm. I'll remember this. I'll remember this. They gave yeah. me like a thousand gold pieces. What did you ever give me? Oh, yes. Don't, <laughs> don't forget to the jade as well. The, the gemstone. Give it here. Give it here. I must inspect it. No, I. I this is going to be for my belly button. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm a fancy man now. Uh, John, I will uh, reach into the uh, uh, bag and pull out pull out a sandwich to give to Yost. <laughs> it's so kind okay so right. uh so on where you want to write that down um the the activation square uh i'll say i'll, yeah, I'll say it's unencumbering why not yeah. i'm feeling nice right. and, and of wow. course the gem is um the gem is unencumbering as well what, hey, what uh, was the gem again just a, a jasper a- Jasper. Is Jasper on the uh, off to look up the illusion table? Actually, never mind. I can look up myself. I think it's probably more precious than what you need for your spells. But yeah, but uh, if so, you're into um, gems, which I know you are, um, it's a pretty one. Mm-hmm. So Mike, yeah, Mike, yeah, I didn't want to go in there, huh, Mike? I didn't want to go in there with the darlings. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm so, glad we did. Uh, do you do anything else, or do you head back out? I'm really curious the about there chest. not being any doors, but it's you weird. Uh, you want no, to check the bottom of the chest? Oh, I should root around in the bottom of the chest, yeah. Okay. See yeah, if there's anything else in there. Doors. False bottom, yeah, that kind of thing. Be very careful to look through the chest, but it just appears to be a normal chest. And after okay. you're done doing that, and uh, I assume it, or wrapping it up, um, Everest's torch goes out, and your room is plunged into darkness. No, I have a lantern. Well, I have a lantern outside the room. I don't know how much it would be extending in. I'll strike it. I'll strike up another torch. Okay. The four. All right. And let's climb out of here and go south. I'm just gonna check something real quick. Cause you know, wandering monsters. You know, they wouldn't dare. We've got stuff to do. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you pop back out and you're like, well, that was sweet. And uh, looking southwards uh, with your newly lit torch, Avaricios, um, you can see that it goes down for 20 feet before hitting a door straight at the end of the hallway. Oh. I suspect okay. that door I is familiar. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it would work. Do you open the door? All right, well, uh, so there's a door at the end of the hallway. Yep. Okay. This normal wooden Archontian door, iron band. Listen at it. Spend a turn listening. You do I think not. This hear, is wise. You do not hear anything. Let's open that, baby. Okay. Yeah. You open it up, and you find yourself in a place that you have been before. No. You, are, you are in an intersection directly across from you, 10 feet away, is a door to the south. Directly to your right is a door to the west. And then 10 feet down the corridor to the east is a door as well. You are in the intersection that uh, many sessions ago, um, what you assumed was a guard post at one point because of the intersection. Thick layer of trash on the ground. Um, and uh, stonework is unadorned, uh, but neatly fitted, like a very utilitarian. So at this point, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to uh, encircle that entire thing. Yeah, yeah I'm trying to. <laughs> and let me actually get this over so the folks at home can see it. As Ted makes it. How do I drag mask. it once I've encircled it? You, I don't know, like a little, little hand should appear, I think. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, I cir- ah, Come on, mouse. Uh, all right, well, nice. we're moving this. I'm going to go say goodnight to a kid, and I'll be right back. Okay. No problem. Well, actually, we'll just take all a right. quick little break while Ted gets this in order, and we'll be right back. <clears throat> okay, we're back. We have aligned the map. As you can see, they are right 
Yeah. So close. So close. So close. Within feet of goblin death. Yeah, or, uh, so you're basically in a four-way right. intersection. However, the door to the east is a little bit further down, but you have been here. Now, previously, the last time you went, you went through the western door, which is where you found uh, the the feathers. Uh, feathers of Ma'at, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and eventually uh, went south and discovered all the, uh, the alcoves and tombs and yeah, all that kind of good stuff. So... Um, uh, uh, undead seem to be in that direction of of sorts for some some strange reason. Um, yeah, the and tentacle monsters. Yeah, no, yeah. that's further south, further west through the secret door. Well, south and west, yeah, yeah south, yeah, 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 yeah both yeah. of them. Yeah. However, yeah. Uh, you do know for a fact now that directly south, should you go through the door to the south, that leads to the Debouchement. Debouchement. What do you do? All right, not go that way. <laughs> yeah, I do not. It's it's not time. It's not time to do this yet. Um, we go west. I, I well, I don't think we should go west either because east. East. Remem east. Yeah, oh, I, I don't I think we should. East. Sorry, I'm in east. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I don't think we should go there yet either because remember when we were in that room, there were halfling footprints that went this way. I think that this is part of where they go. Yeah, uh, so that could patrol. allow you. To, yeah, but that could allow you to pick some off. As long as you don't screw it up, you know. On, based on our map, there's no other way to that brick wall. It's the only yeah. route to the brick wall, so we have to we have to we go east. Uh, encountering a patrol. There's no way to avoid it. So you're heading east. Yeah. Well, Matt looks skeptical. So let's. I mean, uh, yeah, it's 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 fine because the only other way to do it would be to um, uh, send somebody in, invisible. To, I mean, I don't know how many times the cloak can be used. Three times, three, three times a day, times for thirty day. minutes. Yeah, if you and go, if you go around, you could open that door in the desk room, and we might be able to get to sneak all the way through. Right, you know but I mean? you don't have a way to activate the invisibility. Mort's upstairs. No, no, no I was saying like, I, like I, on I, where I, would I, have, the cloak has. On where would have to, right, 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 right. Yeah, on where could do it I by can himself. go to that door. Where do you suspect that door leads? I uh, imagine we can, there's a room. We can ask Dalton. He went through it. But I thought, yeah. but I thought the whole thing was it was a one way door. So getting you guys, in other words, if you're trying to route from Dalton's original through that door, what it sounds like to me is that it's, it was a one way exit. Well, if what I, I, what I was the yeah. the other option. There's nothing wrong with like sneaking down this hallway for sure. The <laughs> other option on the table is you put you turn on the your cloak of invisibility, you sneak back through with the way that we did, and you follow his path and you hold that door open. And we yeah, go we, back we up. Spike it open or something. Yeah, I can do we, that. I don't. If, if you'd prefer me to do that, that's fine. So why I mean, don't I? Yeah. What, whatever. I'm just confused, and it's because I'm not very smart. Is the goal not to get to the brick wall? <laughs> it is, and, you, and, and, and just and, wait there until it's time to go. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah but it is. And the short, the easiest possible way to do that for is for us to all just walk over there, rather than me walking right. through that same spot, walking past the brick wall, going north, trying to hold it, hold the door open. Y'all returning to the zombie room and coming well, south again. But yeah, if you're go ahead. The, it, so what Matt's suggesting is, one person would, if if, if they were to go back, um, they would not go past the brick wall. You go into this uh, room. You go through the bronze doors that uh, yeah. Mort broke open. And you go west through the desk room. No, no, right? I, I understand what you're yeah. saying. I'm, I'm saying the, the brick wall is a stone's throw east from that yeah. intersection. Yeah. So, so we're adding several turns. And, and if, for instance, random encounters are a concern, more opportunities for random interactions. Rather than me, if you want me to go invisible, scouting 40 feet east, saying, hey, there are no halflings, and y'all walking through, right? Like, yeah. All right, let's do that. That's fine. Yeah, that, that, that's pretty good. Which okay. I can do. So all of you are going east. Yeah. Well, why don't we um, why don't we go into uh, oh I just lost my dot. Why don't we go into uh, this hallway here, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and then uh, Onweir goes invisible and scouts ahead. Sure. That way we're not in that little tighter intersection. Okay. Uh, so let's do it. So you you, you yeah. head east. You go through the door. Um, you find yourself in that 30 foot long stretch of passageway that just goes east to right. west. There's no one in there. It does look like they, that, uh, uh, which you saw, actually you haven't been this direction actually before. So it's, it's an unadorned, uh, that does not have like the, the, the frescoes or anything like that. 
Once again, this seems to be like a guard area, sort of like very kind of utilitarian, just a passageway between places. And um, but it does look like the dust here has been disturbed and that there's been traversal here at numerous points. The same as back in the intersection mm -hmm. as well. Um, and there is a door directly to the east at the end of that 30 foot long corridor. Yeah. Well, some yeah. of that dis disturbance is us because we it did does. come. We, we've cut, this is how we escaped the dungeon the first time. We've been through all of this. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, that was we broke that's how we came door. out. This yeah. is how we, we came out. Really, yeah. But John's talking about the 30 foot length of hallway between the two doorways. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Through, through we, which we traversed where... in order to yeah. escape this dungeon. No, yes. you, guys, we came you out. guys went through the bronze door Tr straight Trust down. Who doesn't the... drink during the sessions? <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no. Mike, Mike's right, though. You, 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 you went guys went straight south <laughs> into the debouche no. room. And no, yeah. we did not. Oh, we did no, not. Because I'd have fucking mapped it if we, we were gone. Yeah, yeah, we, we went this way. It, and then we came out from southward from the intersection we're at right now. And then yeah, we, hit, like we head east from that corner as yeah. fast as we could and up the stairs. Oh, yeah, you're right. We yeah, have yeah, done this. It doesn't matter, but we have done this. Anyway, I'm going to go I'm going to listen to for any movement. Yeah. If I don't hear anything, I'm going to go invisible. I'm going to open the door. <laughs> okay. So you spend a turn and you listen yeah. carefully. Yeah. One, one moment. Okay. You listen at that door on where you can hear yeah. hushed voices on the other side. Uh huh. Do they sound oh. small? Yes, they do. That's really good to know. That's really good to know. Okay. We, Do we hear the word second breakfast. <laughs> okay. Um, Should we just sec bust sec sec kill them second proposition? I mean, we could just bust through and come on. Should I go invisible, go south rather than east, and peek around into the debouche, debouche, debouche room? And, and then I mean, try to see them. I mean, it's yeah. risky, but I could try to I can try to go back around because I'm assuming this is symmetrical. In other words, and see them from the back end, but I don't know what help that has other than preventing them from uh, uh, announcing us to everyone else. I mean, yeah, if if we start fighting these guys now, yeah. then and you we're whispering this right, like back up. If we start fighting these guys now, it's going to alert them, and the team yeah. up upstairs is not coming down here for a long time still. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Maybe we should back up back to the spiral staircase room and wait a <laughs> while. I think I think that's probably a good idea because it, they're wait, they're going to come down at midnight if we need them we'll be dead. Yeah, let's just back up. Wait, but well, our plan is to, our plan is to wait three hours at this at the spiral staircase until the assault starts. Anyway, I mean we now have confirmed the route. Yeah. Right, and but Matt is right. If we start fighting in this in this room, even if we win, we could very likely alert the whole posse. Yeah, we'll be all by ourselves. Guys, I awesome. could go invisible and walk up to the main force and say, hey, I heard halfling voices. If, if, we, if we want to start the main assault now and ignore ignore stealth or ignore subterfuge, I'll just walk out the front entrance and yeah. get everyone. The other thing and, that you could, you could do, David, is you could also go invisible. I like your idea of circling down south into the debouche room, coming back up that hallway. The only thing is, is it's dark. Right, yeah. and you don't have night vision or anything, or not night vision, uh, infrared. The, like that. the boost room is lit. It's lit. No, I, I get yeah. that, but the hallway right. from the north up to the bronze doors is probably not. And right. I guess my my point being is, it would be useful to find out what they're doing. If, yeah. if I That's, if I see that they have a full <laughs> army with you know palisades built <laughs> ready for our, our attack, it, I mean it that's, might that's worth, information. It might be worth scouting out the Dapoosh room because maybe Isidore got another message through. Yeah. yeah, let's let's do this. Let's back up into the the moaning hallway. Let yeah. Invisible Boy go down and peek and see what right. they're doing and meet right. back with us. Okay. Quick, so you, question. You, Quick question. Uh, so Mort has on a ring that if he goes blind, will turn uh, Avaricius invisible. Correct. So Avaricius has a ring on. What happens to you that happens to Mort? What's the reverse thing? I forget. I'm wearing Laurel's cloak. No, 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 no. He's okay. the rings no, are two it, way. It, it, it's the Matt, same yeah, thing. It's the same thing. Whoever instigates goes, okay. goes blind. The other person goes invisible. So, so Avaricius could theoretically signal Mort. Oh. Now, I'm sitting right here telling you I know what Mort would say. Oh, <laughs> I'm just going invisible. I think we have to go down there, which now, is a bit meta. But that would be amazing, right. Ted. But we should have discussed that ahead of time. So I, I, know. I would okay. say we shouldn't. We can't do it now. 
Okay, fine. Yeah. Let's just let him sneak and look at the let's, end of okay, the Okay, all right. So the, the party so let's backs. Let's ride the lightning. Let's ride the lightning. Let's have fun. Let's, let's, move <laughs> forward. let's move it forward. The, the party backs up into the zigzag corridor that's going to mm-hmm. take a turn uh, in order for you to traverse that back quietly. Yep. Um, sure. You can see the darlings are itching for a fight because um, they're so close. They're like, they're right, they're right there. Uh, okay, Onwir, you what? You turn invisible, use the cloak. Go invisible. I'm going to go south to Debussy. Okay, so it's very much like the, the girl from the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon, right? Like you put up the hood and you sort, you sort of like, <laughs> and you you go invisible. Um, before I leave, before I leave, I go to Avaricious and I whisper in his ear, "I love what you've done with your hair." <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, which way, which direction are you going on, Weir? South. So I'm going I'm to go. I know, but which? Uh, which I, I know, Sorry, but. Are you going south from the intersection corridor, or from? Uh, are you going through? Are you going to enter where the half where the halflings are? No, I'm going south through the intersection. I'm going to try to go okay. behind them. Got it. I'm, I'm basically trying to flank them quietly and scout while I'm doing that, and then back out quietly if I can from there. So okay. I'm going south from the intersection. Got it. Into the, into the uh, north westerly entrance to the debouche room yep. i'm going to peek around the corner see what i see progress as as necessary yep okay so you move down that corridor it opens up into that uh, t intersection there where there's like small guard post where you found a couple of items before um like an aquamarine i believe um nice. and uh there was uh and then you approach that door that you know leads directly into the large uh debouchement cool you open I'm it. I'm gonna listen at it. I'm gonna listen at it. Okay. Uh, roll me a uh, d6, please. Roll, roll me your listen check. Certainly. That's a one. <laughs> That's one. good. That's good. Yeah. That's the good oh, one. Oh, you're right. You're right. All oh, right. One <laughs> yeah. <six>. Amazing. <laughs> I'm so used to getting disappointed by ones. You know, I gotta remind myself once in a while. Okay, so you listen at the door, and you can hear on the other side, which appears to be on the far end of the room, probably n- near the portcullis, you can hear more halflings uh, talking and chatting. Uh, they seem to be sort of jovial, not not really on edge or anything like that. Does it seem like they are on the other side of the door, or like well in the dimension? No, across the other side of the room towards the portcullis. Can I? Oh, I, I gotcha, I gotcha, sorry. Can I uh, very slowly crack open the door and kind of slink my body through it? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you can do that. No problem. Because you've got that huge shadowed statue of Thoth in the middle of the room that mm-hmm. basically lo- uh, yeah. blind, that blocks line of sight. But you've got the torches. Sure. Don't forget. Um, in They're actually marked on the map. They're those little dark dots. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, and you can see as you kind of slink quietly into the room, completely invisible, that mm-hmm. there is uh, five halflings they are armed but they're not like at the ready you know what i mean they just sort of have like spears on their on their shoulders they have slings at their belts um and uh they're basically chatting sitting uh just on the on this side of the portcullis right in the you know right in uh, in the in the room proper gotcha and roz kelly is there with her spiked red hair and she is basically sort of holding court, kind of telling like body tales and stuff like that and they're they just seem kind of bored and they're sort of snacking on a look at board provisions um, but they're, yeah, they're just sort of chilling right there. Gotcha. There is no uh, clear path, uh, to the portcullis without moving through them, their little cluster. Yeah. I'm not going to go to the portcullis. Is there a clear move. path to the northeastern <coughs> door? Yes, there is. Door. Uh, can I sneak over there? Uh, you certainly can. Um, and John, just, just a, a quick point of clarification, the portcullis and the place where they're gathered is kind of like over here yeah or is it exactly right okay there. yeah okay now uh on where you have a choice uh i will not make you roll for a move silently mm-hmm. if you are willing to take two turns to yeah. s- very slowly creep your way to that door two turns dude you only have a three turns three. total on that cloak that's true. and you've already burned at least one turn to you, get here yeah you were listening at the door for one he almost got you. <laughs> you. Look at that face. Look at that innocent face. <laughs> you guys can do 
totally do it. Totally. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> GMs are your best <laughs> advocate. All right, buddy. I'm on your side, man. <laughs> You're on our side. What, what are you, you going to do? do, David? <clears throat> I'll, I'll tell you this if you if if you don't want to take the two turns like you i'm not going to screw you like that i i seriously wasn't even thinking about that but you would no. you would be able to slip through that door like the moment the invisibility went off if you took the two turns however it is two turns and you know what that means um if you if you oh. if you want to move relatively quickly you would have to roll a move silently and i would give you a um two and six chance of failing it so he would have a four and six chance of succeeding yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a good okay. chance of succeeding, but yeah. you know, you I, I, I will, I will uh, listen to the group's uh, opinion, but I think it's more fun to do the four and six roll, and just do a turn. I, I absolutely think you should do that. Okay, so I'm gonna do one turn. I'm gonna roll for it. Okay, see what, see what happens. One second. Oh my god, we've never been uh, disappointed by die rolls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when, when is that ever going to happen? Remember the law, uh, David, that you still need that rolling dice, you've lost. Yeah. I know. Oh. But not in this case. This is the one yeah. time. I'm giving you oh, a pretty good chance time. because oh. you're invisible, you know what I mean? So, um, But there's a lot of debris and stuff like that on the floor, so got to be careful. Here we go. One or two, you fail. Oh, I got to turn on my oh, three, oh, three, baby. Three. Three. Oh, I saw it there for a oh. second. I was a little bit scared I, myself. I, I, like, so, I okay. make some rude. I make some rude gestures at uh, at the halflings. They yeah. can't see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. You you uh, quickly and quietly, like a little mouse, you sneak across the northern wall and mm -hmm. uh, disappear into the uh, the northeastern. Uh, corridor and this is strange enough right here at the beginning of the main entrance to the dungeon is a place that you haven't been <laughs> uh, and it's a dead end <laughs> no. so your instincts for right on weir um it is yeah. an ex uh at, up to this point is an exact mirror of the western one so mm. ted if you just want to copy that sort of t intersection with the door uh that is what it is um however the uh, contents here are a little bit different. It looks like this was also a, a guard post, you know, symmetrical mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff at one point. Um, however, uh, the only inhabitant here is a skeleton that is staked to the wall in the eastern niche of that intersection there. Oh. Yeah. Eastern um, niche? Yes. So, like... There are... Right the, there. The, there's dust that lies on the floor, basically in both niches. However, there are definitely like halfling sized footprints that kind of make, you know, backwards and forwards, just going straight through into the door. Um, right. So the skeleton, when you say skeleton stake to the wall, do you mean an animated skeleton? No, no, no. It's just or like a, an inanimate skeleton. And it, there is a, um, like a, a metal, like a long metal spike that has been th thrust through its sternum. And has impaled it hanging on the wall, so it's just sort of like, you know, like Temple of, of Doom. Yeah, or, no, okay. sorry, Raiders yeah, of Lost okay. Ark. Yeah, like jaw, just sort of like agape and, and yeah. hanging there. You know what I mean? The bone structure, however, on where as you sort of pass by, is extremely fine. Like the 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 bones, the bones of the skull are actually um, uh, quite narrow. Speak elf. Of, mm -hmm. Formerly elf. Possibly. Interesting. Interesting. I uh, I acknowledge it and promptly move forward <laughs> to the door. Okay, uh, the skeleton. So you're still invisible for one more turn, right? Is that the yes. deal then? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So. Okay, you you go. Do you just go through that door? Um. You don't have time to listen, bro. I know. My debate is whether I should go into one of these little nooks, and re-trigger for another of my three a days. Oh, you are blind. No, I'm not. No, no. He's, he's using oh. the, the cloak. I'm wearing the cloak. No, but you're, but you're, you can't see. Anything. Oh, you don't have any light. Oh, but there's light mm. in the boosh room. No, not in the yeah, guard room. But the moment not. you close the door behind you in that T intersection, you wouldn't have been able to see the skeleton. Uh, ah. I can, I can, uh, okay. You got a wand, dude. I have, oh, I, I have a wand. I have, I have a lantern. I have plenty of light sources. My concern is announcing myself. Here's what I would like to do, John. Mm hmm. Could I crack that door and see if any light is emitting from it? Or look under it. 
Or just look under it. Is, can I see under it? Yeah, I want to see if there's light north of this door. So there is very, very faint light. And it is okay. continuous and warm. It is not flickering. Okay. Okay. I am in pitch black right now. Um, you know what? I'm going to expend because I'm in pitch black and they can't see me. I'm going to expend my, my turn listening again. Okay. And then I'm going to, I'm going to, then I'm after that, I'm going to re, I'm going to do my second of three invisible cloaks. Okay. You're just going to activate it. Again. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, roll me a D six for listen. Sure. That's a five, a five. Okay. So you don't hear anything beyond the door. All right, I am going to... Uh, Knowing where you kind of are with the yeah. map in your head on where, you know, like that that, va that may very well just be, co be because of distance. Sure. Right. What do you do? Uh, I'm going to crack the door ever so slightly and peek through. Okay. You're invisible again, so you open yeah. the door. And you can see that there is a 40-foot long corridor. Mm-hmm. Halfling footprints leading up, and you mm -hmm. can see beyond there that there it, uh, that it opens up into the room that you expect. And um, in that room, it, once again, it's at a distance, is being lit by continual light. You know this for a fact. That is when Mort broke through that door, mm -hmm. um, what he witnessed. And you can see that uh, spread around that room is a, another squad of what looks to be another five halflings. These do not appear to have any known leader like anyone that you've actually seen before there are a smattering of halflings that you've dealt with before you know like at ross kelly's side sort of thing um but uh yeah they are armed similarly damn all right so at this point i can backtrack or i can follow avaricius's initial concern uh or, or idea and go north the way the daltons did and crack that door open and whistle your way anyone have a preference I kind of wondering what would happen if you just like flat out sprinted right through the room as fast as you could and didn't care about sound. I, I'm wrong. The, the, these guys actually are wearing um, slightly lighter armor. They're just wearing leather where the other ones were wearing um, studded and they are carrying um, short swords instead of spears, but they also do have slings. Um, just so you're aware. Okay. They do appear to be uh, on where, however, they do appear to be packing up like they're they're kind of getting up off their feet and uh, appear to be sort of assembling themselves leisurely, mm. you know? Yeah, pro probably mm. won't be quick enough for my cloak to stay up. Um, 20 minutes? You can just sit there for 20 minutes and wait. Yeah, can I wait for 10 and watch and see what happens? Sure. Uh, so, so can I expend one turn, you know? That's your first turn of your new invisibility. Yeah, <laughs> see what happens. Oops. Um, at this point, um, Avaricios back in the hallway, your torch goes out. Oh, that's right. He took the lantern. Okay. Let me light another one. You're lighting another one? Okay. Yeah. You're, mar you're marking these off in your sheet, right? I am. I'm down to three. Okay. Okay. So um, after about, uh, yeah, it, within that span of 10 minutes, um, what they do is they look to have like a, a, they gather around the broken bronze doors. And it looks like they're having a conversation about them and inspecting them. Uh, one that they, uh, right. And they're, they're just kind of looking around and they seem to come to the same conclusion that they did the first time they walked into the room. Right. Which is just sort of like, they're just kind of shrugging, kind of looking at it, kind of feeling around it and kind of peering through the door. Um, one is sort of what it looks to be a sort of a, a more over eager half playing like steps through and is, um, and, and one of his compatriots sort of is like, no, 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 no. And he pulls him back and he like, he makes a gesture towards what you know is like that statue that's in the middle of that larger room beyond. And, and he's like, makes like a negating gesture, like don't do it, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, they kind of, one of them sort of points their fingers like towards the West and they uh, move to uh, basically at the end of that turn on where they move towards that Western door and open it. Like they're going to go through. <laughs> okay. And everyone's, the at, the inter everyone's yeah. at the intersection. Yes, they're coming your way. Okay, so no, no, we're up, we're up in the uh, zigzag hallway. Yeah, we oh, close that door. Zigzag. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then, then I'm gonna I'm gonna allow them to do that. You should just follow them. Yeah, I'm gonna slowly follow them. Okay. Cool. So uh, they. Okay, so let's say 
and another turn goes by. Second turn of your invisibility on where? As you, uh, at this point, you move into the larger room and you uh, move into the western corridor following them. Um, you are you want to be like 30 feet behind? Does that sound safe to you? Yeah, it sounds safe. Okay. Sure. Um, so you open the door at the same time that they open the western end of that corridor, right? And they, they open that door and they're, they're being like relatively quiet. They just seem to be going about their job. They're kind of looking around um, and they enter that intersection and uh, they stop and you can hear them sort of like, wait, you hear a couple of them like, what's, what's this now? This isn't just our footprints here. There's something else here. Do, do we hear them, John, on on our side of the door? And you, you do not because you're all the way back in that zigzag, right? Right. And that door is closed. Yeah, I guess we're back here. Right. Yeah. So, um, well, it looks like someone's been traipsing around. Did we uh, did we pull any fees last time? Did Ross Kelly uh, bring back any of the? We we, we seen any, we allow people to go up here recently. Oh, I don't remember anybody. Last time I saw was there was darlings as they escaped. It was what, it was a couple of days ago now. Well, someone's going around here without uh, paying the fee. Plumthorn's going to be pissed. Should we have a look? I'm well, going to. Oh well, I mean. You want to do something? Let it happen, David. Let him ha- let it happen. <laughs> All right. I mean, I, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll let him. Yeah, y'all, y'all kill him. Go for it. Okay. Well, they might be dangerous sorts, right? We'll just take a quick peek, see if there's anyone around. We spot anybody, we'll just go right back and we'll tell Plumthorn. Sound good? Right. Let's do it. Now, David, jam that door shut so they can't escape. But look. I don't know. I- they said, they said, look, well, they, the, the, the prints are going both north and south. All right. Three of you down south, two of you up north. Mm, yeah. They, okay. <laughs> when I when I hear that, because that's just going to get complicated. Well, no, I guess not. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. I'll let it play out. Go, 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 go. Yeah. All right. So they so they break off. So three of them head, head through the southern door, two head through the northern door. When you guys, when they, when the two head through the northern door, the rest of the party hears that door open. Okay, all you hear is a door opening. Mm-hmm. Okay. It could be on weir for all we know. Now they have However, their, they have their oh, swords good. out, and they're being very, very quiet. Okay, but you can, they have uh, torches lit in their other hand, and um, or at least one of them does. I'll say one of the two <laughs> does, and you guys can see flickering torchlight coming from there. But they're trying to be quiet and very careful right so you don't hear them talking technically you guys don't even know what it is right um but you just see flickering light and you hear the door open would it be possible for me john oh go ahead mike i was gonna say onware has a lantern which does not flicker the same way a torch does so that might be a visual cue for us to be like "Mm, that's not onware and get ready uh i'm also willing and in fact i think i would follow the northerly group continue behind them and i want to have my wand of lucos at the ready okay and when i think that they're about to cross roughly the threshold where i left the party Mm -hmm. i'm going to cast blind on them okay like yeah you're going to use light which will also announce the situation to all of y'all pretty obviously because someone someone has casted that yet right does that does that seem like a, a good uh yeah idea mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. trying to do it silently you know so okay so give me one second here sure all right so this is the first use use of that thing um yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure everything's first. fine <laughs> we practiced this uh no we didn't we have no idea what it does. Okay, so let's look. Uh, bu- bu- bu. We're going to look up a little it's bit of this gonna work like you did in, uh, in Dolmenwood, huh? Okay. Right. Okay, so yeah, you 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 know that <laughs> it's about to kind of turn that quarter, and 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 uh, they're going to expose themselves to the rest of the party. And that's the moment you're going to do it. Yeah, and okay. I can only cast it on one of them, and, okay. unless the wand works differently than I'm aware. What do you do with the wand? I cast blind on. Yeah, but what do you do? You what got. He never used it. He never uh-huh. used it. <laughs> like, it you, you, did, you, you were sure you knew how it worked, so you didn't get it identified. What do you do? <laughs> this is gonna be great. Oh, it's Leviosa. Leviosa. Uh, you have notes. You have notes. 
<laughs> David, I, it, I believe it actually says the word glucose on the it side. It says glucose on the side. I would say just point it and say the word. That'd be what I would do. Let me look real quick. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. I'll do that. I'll do that. It's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Fight. This is like, gonna, we're never going to get there. Sure, sure, sure. I, yeah, I want to I keep things rolling because it's, it's getting late already. So yeah, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna raise the wand and, and just have the most sinister bony fingers holding it in your imagination. And, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna ray finds these motherfuckers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> strange days, though. Not not uh, not uh, um, uh, whatever, whatever the other one is. Yeah. Uh, okay, so and I and I'm gonna say Lucas with the whisper okay. upon it. A explosion of light, <laughs> like, like bursts out um, uh, towards them, and they have to make some saving throws. Boom, boom. Let's do a little bit of this action right here. Boom. Oh, wow. Multiple saving throws. <laughs> Since, mm, I love uh, to hear that. Fail. Oh. <laughs> and make half is only okay. half normal size. Can this expel, like, hit them both? No. So the um, wow. so the spell goes forward. It, uh, it shoots out of the wand. Uh, I marked a charge off of the wand. And the guy that was holding the torch is like, ah, and he drops the torch. That torch goes out. Oof. Um. However, there's light everywhere as he's like holding his face, like, oh my God, I can't see. What is that? The other one, like, like basically, like, shuts his eyes and uh, uh, turns his face away from it um, as he whips, his, whips around with his short sword and sees you there. You guys obviously hear everything going down and see the light burst out and everything. What do you do? As, as, as soon as I can, when I hear this, I, I know our goal is to be quiet. I cast silence. Mm. Oh. Okay. Um, well, at, uh, at that whole end of the hallway, so it would capture that whole end. Okay, cool. Uh, love it. Love Let's um, roll for initiative first, though, so you can get it off before uh, they can do something. Go All ahead, right. Matt. I think, I think uh, actually, I think David should roll the initiative since he instigated this. Uh... Go for it. Roll it. I'm okay, I'm okay with that. Do us up, David. Roll D6. Come on. It's a five. Five, okay. A? Nice. nice. I got a. You guys win. Uh, heck yeah. Sweet. Okay, so th they are ba basically what's going to happen is uh, the blind guy is just going to be stunned for a round. Um, the other uh, one is whips out his sword and is going to charge headlong at Onweir. Uh, what do you guys do? Uh, Avrisios uh, is going to cast silence, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Yost will charge forward to fight. Yep. Sam is going to charge forward and stab the nearest halfling. Okay. Uh, you can certainly do that. Um, that is the one that is basically stunned. Well, oh, actually, okay. they're, both, they're both there because they, they, you guys want initiative. Yeah, they're right next to each other. Onward, do you want to do anything else? I want to do everything I can to prevent this person from leaving the cone of silence. So if that means just barreling at him, the guy's running at me, I will I will match his charge with my own. Okay, so basically the darlings as well are just going to like charge forward as, as fast yeah. as they can. Now, there isn't, there's only so many people that can actually squeeze down this 10-foot corridor, yeah. but I'm going to rule it once again that there's one guy stunned. You guys want yeah. initiative. And the other one that's going for onward can't even make a move yet before you guys go. So I'm going to I say, like, to back them, yeah. between yeah. all of you guys, there's no chance that you guys are going to miss. Uh, like, you basically yeah. slaughtered these two halflings um, in silence, which is key. The, right. the, the spell nice. goes off. Nice. Uh, Let's need... take the stunned one prisoner. How long does silence last? I agree. Uh, let me check. I think it's quite a while. Silence lasts. Second level spell. 12 uh, turns. 12 turns. That's yeah. a long time, but I am going to track because I'm a bastard like that. That will not get us to midnight. Silence. Okay. Got it. All right. Uh, that was amazing. Nicely done. All right. So there was a single shout, right, of the one guy getting blinded, and then there was like absolute silence. Um, generally, right now, you guys are all sort of encompassed in that, so everything's like really quiet right now. <laughs> yeah. You know. I think we should uh, prepare for the other two to come back up. David, you're going to want to try to get your camera to sort of see you. Oh, oh it's blurred out. Yeah, there you go. I don't know why. Yeah. This thing there constantly uh, shifts yeah. focus. Yeah. It's the invisibility cloak. It'll do that to you. True. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so we um, have the one guy prisoner, right? Uh, sure, if you want. Okay. What do you do? Uh, I think we should anticipate these other two coming through this doorway post haste, yep. if not with the other six, if they, they have the CL. See? Um, Somebody should take the prisoner halfling up to the spiral staircase room for interrogation while some of us stand here and guard this spot. And if any more halflings come through, we kill them in the silence. Yep. Agreed. 
Okay, so you. So you will stay here. So you go through the into the illusory past illusory chamber into the stairwell. <coughs> yeah. Is it the plan? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. the combat. All took of it. us, though, John will wait to fight. Gotcha. Half okay. Right? So a turn. Except took... on we're. I'm sorry. On we're. Why don't you go question the halfling? The that seems of us. like a safer thing. Yeah. Sure. Right. I'll do that. Okay. Yeah. On where? What do you ask the halfling? Oh my I'm god. Uh, I remember you. <laughs> what gives? We were just patrolling. All you had to do was pay the fee. I'll forget all about it. You come with me now to to Plumthorn. You just pay the fee. Forget about it. (laughs) I'm sorry to say I I don't remember your face, friend. It has so little uh, significance to me and mine. Um, What were you doing? (laughs) What, what, What were you doing inspecting the doors? Just... Uh, uh, fearful of intruders. Oh, it's it's or... part of our route. Those bronze doors have stayed stuck as long as I've been down here, and that's been it's been a long time, months now. Looks like someone and, busted and, through. And are you are you the only patrol that comes through this area, or are there others? Who wants to know? Me. What do you care? And I, I slap him across the face as hard as I can. <laughs> oh, you son of a bitch! <laughs> we claim this territory. I know people. What? You know that. You hurt me. You're hurting Plumthorn, and Plumthorn don't like to be hurt. He'll come get you. You'll never, you'll never explore <laughs> down here in Ardenvul again. I promise um, you that. I take a coin out of my pocket and I say, "I will kill you by making you choke on this if you if you keep fucking me around." <laughs> <laughs> All right, then out with it. What do you want to know? <laughs> Are there other patrols? No, we always go out in groups of five. All right. And entrances to your uh, little hovel, uh, the brick wall. Yes, one. The portcullis, another. Your chasm. Any others? Well, no. There's a, there's only through the port coast. It wouldn't be a good defense if there was other ways in. Brick wall. That's been bricked up for generations now. There's a, not going to get through. What's on the other side? I have no fucking idea. Hmm. I don't believe you. Slap him again. <laughs> I swear I to God, we never... <laughs> like spits blood. Ask him what's on his side, David, on his side. That's what I mean. No, oh, no, that's what I was asking him is what's on his side of the brick wall. He, thinks, he doesn't oh. know you've been on the other side. You asked, the, you asked him what's on the other side of the brick wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I still got a little bit of cold. That's well, got to uh, be uh, Isocritus. Is, not Isocritus, whatever his name is. The, the uh, alchemist. Blondvig. 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 That's got to be Blondvig's yeah. room. You think so? <laughs> Uh, well, I'm going to say, uh, no, the brick wall in your little hovel, you you know where it's at, yes? Is it is it Blodvig's room? Is it is one of your allies uh, roosting up there? Or? Oh, it's where the magic user, he does his, his work over there. He has a little workshop. It's our little business arrangement. Yeah. Right. And, and what is that arrangement exactly? Ah, oh, you can cock some uh, some fine juices. Sells mm. them at market. Mm, he like spits out a tooth. Um... He's about as much of a bastard as you are. All you spellcasters are alike with your little robes and your little wands. <laughs> ask, ask him if Blondvig is here today. Is, yeah, I mean, sure. Is Blondvig in his quarters now? Is he sleeping? Oh, he's, a, he... he's, he's about. Uh, yeah, yeah, he might be talking to Plumthorn. He might be working on his juices. He might be mm-hmm. taking a break. Who knows? I'm on patrol. Mm-hmm. And when mm-hmm. does everyone typically bed down, my friend? Oh, we do it in shifts because there ain't no daylight around here. Mm, Let's see. I got about another hour or so on my shift and my bed down. Another group goes out. No, you don't. (laughs) I don't believe what you're saying. Um, Yeah, I mean, I I don't want to just for for transparency's sake, I don't want to interrogate him forever. I don't want to keep us from the fun here. Um, I think that's most of what I would ask him in this moment. I'll I'll say... uh, well, this is your lucky day, my friend, because you may be the only of your kind that lives this uh, this night. Um, let's oh, hope that they are, they are as amenable as you. And with that, I'll take some rope and I'll gag them with it. Um, oh, that's a bit of a rough call there. We just take a little bit of money from you and you're planning on slaughtering us all. I'll put that, yes. put that coin on his tongue and I'll gag him, gag yeah, him with, yeah, with a coin yeah. in his mouth. <laughs> is this before or after he takes out the, the pictures of his kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, would, uh, John, I would like to pat him down real quick just to make sure there aren't any keys or, or things of that. Uh, no keys. Him. There's a few loose coins. They're basically coppers. Um, yeah. But uh, he does have uh, a short sword, a club, actually. Uh, not a, I'm sorry, a short sword, a dagger, and a uh, sling. Take Can his I, weapons. I was yeah. going to say, I'm going to take his weapons. Um, 
I'll take the sling and the dagger. I mean, I'll take them all, but in terms of what I'll keep on my person, well, I'll just I'll take them all. It doesn't matter. Nine silver, I, if you care. Sure. Um, I'm going to equip since the shrieker is now on Avaricios. I'm going to equip the the normal sling onto myself. Okay. okay. Uh, the interrogation. Actually, no, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do the dagger. Sorry, sorry. The interrogation took a turn. Yep. Now what do you do? What do you do? What do you do with the prisoner? Uh, I'm gonna I bind him if he's not already bound. I thought we bound him. I assumed that was the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, we got rope. Yeah, yeah. We wouldn't send you alone with him if he was leaving him here. Or... I would like to uh, leave him in the barracks room where the undead were. Yeah, shove him in there. Shove him and in you, there. Uh, knock him out. Him inside the chest and lock it. Ooh. <laughs> you know, you know, I love that idea. I'll pop him. I'll pop him in the chest <clears throat> and I'll put something heavy on top of it. You know, uh, and say, "Oh, sleep, you got it. Oh, that'll well. be our moaning. Yeah, yeah. the moaning will yeah. be back. I'll say, "Sleep well, little one." Okay. Uh, um, it is not um, totally secure because there is no lock for the chest. But yeah, sure. But he. But I'm like, oh, I oh, bound his, oh, I bound his legs and, and hands for what it's worth. So got it. Okay, that will take another turn to get that all accomplished. Okay. Now what? The other halfling patrol down. come look for him. Yeah. Uh, how many turns has it been? Um, like two. 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 <laughs> no. They have not come back. What do you do? Um, so, guys, I would like to make uh, the point now that their hackles are going to be up. So you guys should get over to the brick wall room as quickly as possible before shit goes down with the mercenaries. Right? Surprise is going to be blown because those two guys are going to go running back in there and be like, we lost Clem and Cletus. Yeah. And then it's going to be game on, you know? Oh yeah, if we're and if we're gonna do that, we need to knock the little guy in the chest out so he's not squirming and making noise, or he'll give us away that we did that. I can take care of it, it's no problem. Okay, so you knock him out, Mort, um, and then the, the entire party is going east, is that correct? Yeah. I think that's the plan, yeah. Are Get you hustling? Yes. Yes, I think we should. Oh wait, you might walk right into an ambush if you do, but I mean, we should listen we should we should go to this door. I mean fuck, I don't know. The intersection we should listen at, I think. No? We know at least there are there are two guys who are just south of that door, if not further, and they may have reunited with the other five with Ross Kelly. Well, it's already it's already been two turns, so they had time to react already. It's not like we can bolt for it. Sure. So maybe they didn't hear it. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So you're going to quickly move eastward as, uh, through the bronze doors um, yeah. into that chamber that had all the crazy. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So and you're moving quickly. Uh, yes, let's do it. Let's do it quickly. Okay, you can do it all in a turn. <clears throat> um, and you hustle as quickly as you can. You do not see anybody um, or encounter anything as you move into that room. Um, <laughs> I have a thought, guys, which is our, our footprints tipped them off before. That chest was full of um, rags. We could kind of drag them behind us and just obscure all the footprints. Um, and maybe they wouldn't notice anything the lack of footprints is not evidence of you know anything going on so i'm thinking i'll just erase footprints behind us in the dust rather than leave evidence of something definitely having happened okay that sounds legit that's cool um okay so you uh walk through the broken double doors um that mort had torn asunder and uh your in that very large chamber, which is where you actually fought the that dust creature, right? Um, so right. the the, uh, the uh, what would happen? I guess that would just be sort of like dried, caked mud at this point, right? Mm -hmm. um, that yeah, would be all the fair. thing. But that's you fair. don't see any evidence that the monster is anywhere to be seen. This is also where you picked up Set's bane um, and the gold signet ring with the jasmine inscribed inscribed around it. Uh, but you know that through the door to the east is the great chasm awaits with the span across and the brick wall. Um, so uh, you're not you're not wasting any time in this room, right? Right. Okay. So yep. you uh, you head over there. And you enter through the door. The winds of the chasm, right, like the draft that's coming up, like you know the musty smell kind of hits you as you walk over there. The span sort of spans over your voices echo across. You do see at the very edge of your torchlight, you see a couple of arachnoid legs on the other side of the chasm disappear down into the dark and a small, oh, there's more spiders. A, a small skittering you hear down below, but it seemed to have basically um, retreated from your, 
from your light and sound. Um, before you to the south is that bricked up wall. All right. So I think anyone who has a missile weapon has to be on guard against any other spider incursions mm -hmm, mm -hmm. while the rest of you guys basically like prep for whatever you're going to do. Crowbars, yeah. all the rest of that shit. I'll relay what I said, uh, what, I, what I learned about the um, quarters on the other side and suggest that when we break the wall, we, we might have to charge a, a magic user in our silence bubble ASAP. All right. So my question is, I know we were talking about knocking down this brick wall. Um, it may not be so easy to knock down. I'm wondering if we want to cast the silence and start chiseling away now and risk someone detecting that there's a silence cone in effect or the silence is still up by we, the way well that's the other he's got another silence spell and yeah in the, in the other in the other room how many slots do you have uh, I, I have one more casting of silence right okay. and my point being one of them was always saved for this wall right yeah right and so we like because my original thinking was you know oh it's a brick wall you know we uh we cast silence on it we blast through it it might actually not be that easy i, I didn't really think about that so well, I, it was badly mortared remember it was like badly constructed that. um i assume that we all have tools for this like crowbars and shit like that i, I would assume know. that silence would be cast on a small object so that it could be carried with you into the area beyond there right like you can cast it on a coin right right but you, you, there's you, like you can cast it upon uh, a creature not an object yeah a person not a thing uh, right. so, okay well that's fine you cast it on but somebody the radius would extend through the wall right yes which he might notice when he walks over to his dresser and he can't hear his change purse jingling he's like what the fuck is going on okay we've tipped him off that's so why, why don't why don't we triangulate our distance from the wall accordingly i mean the that's, the episode yeah yeah, yeah. And, and let's we'll not reinvent that. the plan at you know this far into it. You're not going to do. I know you're not going to make stupid mistakes. So you cast you you cast silence on somebody that whoever that person is. We'll call it a darling. Stands back so that the edge of the of the radius of the silence is at the very edge of the wall. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then what are you doing for to the wall? So we want to do this um, timed, right? So we want to wait until like right before right before midnight to try to do this right right okay so well i think we, we the last 12 turns which is two hours yeah. so at 11 o'clock when i'm starting my descent you guys cast your silence and start working on the wall yeah right okay okay Perfect. so it is five six it is uh your torch goes out avaricious um at the point where it becomes four five six seven it is now 7 p.m but we have we still have uh a lantern why don't we light the lantern now yeah is this, is, this lantern. is this, uh, is this a lantern that's now. already been lit? How many turns does it have left on it? Or is it new? It's I my still... lantern, and I quaffed it when I went invisible. Um, and I was not counting, if I'm honest. So uh, uh, That was at least four or five turns. Yeah. Maybe more. Sorry, I thought you were tracking it, John. So I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know you had uh, a lantern lit. One, two, three, I lit my lantern whenever Asuros lit his first uh, torch. Okay. Yeah, so and we had, had light had at the front and, and the back. Until yeah. we got to the juncture. I got it. I'm taking, I'm taking six turns off of it. Cool. Okay. okay. Probably about right. Um, okay, so... so let's just sit there on the floor you, while you have we're silence for You have silence on someone for another seven turns. What do you do? You're going to wait. No, no, no. We don't cast it yet. We don't cast it until 11 o'clock. Yeah, okay. So I'm just saying the first silence spell, you're just going to let go, right? So you're, you're going to... Yeah. yeah, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So eleven is exactly at the point where Alan Lantern's Lantern is going to go out. That's perfect, fill it, and then that's a good timing for us. That that's our indicator to start the work. Okay, so at eleven p.m., are you lighting another lantern? Uh, yeah, I'll reach for the lantern and light it. Yes. Okay, one, two, three, four. That is Sunrise Lantern. Yep. Okay, and that would make sense. We've been using that to basically gauge what time it is, mm -hmm. and um, so yeah, at that point when I know I'm going to have two hours. Yeah, I'll cast I'll cast it on a person. They stand back and we start working at the wall. Actually, for future reference, that's an awesome way of timing things. If two people like think two right. and yeah. split up, that's a great idea. Yeah. OK, so at 11 p.m. is when you start busting through the wall. Yeah. And I start my descent. OK, hold on. And, you and now, how are we how are we signaling that? That's when Mort 
goes blind and Avaricious turns It's just invisible. time. It's just time. It's, it's just right? time. They, they were going to come down at around midnight. We start at around 11. Okay. Right? All right. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Okay. Can I, so can we can arrive at midnight at the portcullis? <laughs> yes. Yeah. David? Can I make one recommendation? Take it or leave it. Prior to just sledgehammering the whole wall, do we want to chisel a pinhole yes. and look through it and then continue with the larger destruction of it? Yeah, yeah, and I'm, to be fair, David, we were able to see flickering light through it last time we came through oh, we here. Okay. It's not it's not well mortared. And so Gordon was yeah. like garbage wall. <laughs> okay. All right. So first of all, you spend the time up until eleven and you're just like really quiet. Like, you know, as, as quiet as you possibly can be. You know that Soundwick is gonna carry through that brick wall. Um in that in that span of uh what was it three hours? Okay, you four hours. You um seven Oh, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, okay. Um, four hours. You could hear another patrol go by the bronze doors. Okay, like a couple hours in, that sort of thing, right? But they but they're they seem to be a little bit scared about going through the bronze doors, right? They stop there, they talk about it a little bit, and they keep moving on, right? And they disappear just so you're aware. They are patrolling regularly. And um, then 11 o'clock, you know it's time, right? Outside, Gorned, Mort. Uh, uh, Nicasia and the, the mercenaries are like, it's let's go, it's go time. And they, yes. you carefully like mount up the southern face of the pyramid and begin your descent down, raising the arms uh, parallel to the floor as the, the, the door shifts open and you descend down in. The mercenaries, they have a little bit of a moment. Nicasia has to like whip them up a little bit like... We're being paid for this. Let's do our best. And they, they, but they don't like cramped quarters like that, right? It's like 20, 20 23 men or so, like all going down single file. Um, and I'll lead the way, John. Got it. I'll go cool. first. And you start your descent. At the same time, Avaricios casts his silent spell on, you want to call it Helga, the, the thief? Is there any reason uh, not to do it on me? Uh, do you, want, you want to use your wand again? Yeah, it's, don't do it on you. That's true. That's true. Okay, no, never mind. Yeah, I'll do, I'll okay. do it on Helga because she's like a, a, a thief. She's not going to cast any spells. Sure. She stands back. Um, and how are you? Uh, so are, I, did I hear that you're going to try to chisel a little piece first to look through? Yeah, well, I mean, in this time, we've been like looking through the little hole, right? Like to get a sense of what's on the other side. So you can't really make it out. All, all I was doing that first time was just saying like a little bit of light leaks out, right? You don't have like a real clear, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I would, yeah, I would I think say, we would, like, because I have, I have um, a crowbar, we have iron spikes, we can use that to kind of chisel away. I have a, I have a chisel, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, and it. maybe that hour leading up to it, you're basically removing the mortar from a, from a section <clears> as <throat> much as you can, so that when it's go time, then the crowbar just push. yanks yeah. it out. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so are you... So are point. you just doing the yank or are you actually doing like a no, peak? The point is we're going to chisel a peak first and then we're going to do the yank. Okay, cool. And we have a chisel for that. Okay. So, but you're only going to chisel when it's silent, right? Obviously. So yeah. Yeah. the chiseling yeah. starts at 11 p.m. A turn goes by. Yeah. Um, and as a, we'll say the turn happens for you to chisel a little bit um, on where you peer through in the midst of that silence. And you can see um, that, uh, thankfully, the little bit of mortar doesn't seem to have distracted the people inside, um, of which there are some. Uh Let's see, there are. Okay, so it's been a while since you've you've heard a patrol. Um, when you look in there, it is pretty much like crammed with halflings, okay? There are, appear to be 10 of them, five of them wielding spears as their main weapon, five of them wielding short swords, and then there is towering above them is the hunched wizard Blondveg. Um, the entire chamber, uh, well, actually, I should say more like the southern walls of it. Uh, let me make sure that I'm not screwing this up. Um, there are, first of all, there are three stone sarcophagi in this room as well. Okay. Looks like the lids were pried open a long time ago. The chamber is lit by three large candelabra um, that are placed near each of the sarcophagi, right? So each of the sarcophagi you know, it's like a, a candelabra as well. Um, and there is a small cook fire in the northwestern corner. And there is a, what appears to be a, uh, a, a glowing tripod, like a brazier in the southeast corner. Okay, so it's very well lit, basically. Um, uh, the northeastern corner 
is open to the chasm. Um, and there is a similar small parapet of rubble that's been constructed, similar to the one that you conversed with Plumthorn uh, many days ago. Um, the Along the south, southern wall, there is a, a couple of rickety tables that have been set up along the southern wall. And there is a mass of glass alchemical equipment, six glass bulbs that contain a viscous, clear liquid of some sort. There's herbs, dyes, alchemical powders. And there are um, 18 small glass vials uh, that there is a word that you can tell it's the same word, but you can't tell what the word is that are etched on the side. And they are filled with a sticky green ichor of some sort. Um, and you see that the halflings are all either sort of lounging around, but many of them are actually like looking at the pipettes and the, and the alchemical things, right? And they're, they're carefully, uh, uh, dis what's it called? Uh, not distilling, but um, whatever the word is, uh, uh, whatever concoction that blonde is blonde is like carefully like sort of looking over them mostly almost <laughs> all <New> jack city <laughs> most of uh, most of all of their backs are like turned toward uh turn, turns away from you right they're kind of facing the southern wall but there are there are 10 halflings here there are in one human okay okay so uh if you want to know the dimensions it is a 50 foot by 30 foot chamber 50 foot east to west 30 foot north to south you are looking through a chiseled hole um, that is uh, uh, 20 feet in from the west. However, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll say that. That's fine. All right, guys, we need to wait until the just the main force goes down. We can't do it. This, he says this like on back on the other side of the the bubble. So we need to wait until midnight. They're going to be distracted. That's when we go go through. Okay, we can't, we, we can't hear you, Ted. Um, I I have a notion. Uh, Sorry, I I agree, Avaricious. Also, we now know that literally the chasm is open to that room on the other side of this wall. We have a fly potion. I have an invisibility cloak. And I have a dagger for neck cutting. It is possible <laughs> that I could literally fly around and slit this dude's throat invisibly in preparation or simultaneous to y'all busting this door down so that he is not a problem for us. Do it. Is there any reason I shouldn't do that? It seems like it, rather than all of them rushing and him casting spells off, why wouldn't I just float over as a ghost and stick uh, slowly stick a blade in his neck you know what i mean i mean that will reveal me you know obviously but like all right why not dude let's just fucking do something well, let's do what it. do you guys <laughs> say should we, should we all right. attack some halflings i don't let's even do know uh, let's do it let's do it all right hey ted ted go did i get the dimensions right john uh not actually you got the dimensions right but it's actually you're looking through 20 feet from the western wall so you need to shift the entire room over to the east Oh, 20 feet from the western wall. So, oh, yeah. He lost a lot of the room to the chasm then. Well, your chasm might not be uh, totally. <gasps> Ted's <gasps> chasm isn't perfect. What uh, the fire Ted. the map maker. Fire the map maker. <laughs> no way. He's so 20 dead. feet in. Yeah. All right. So, so dude, as, as, as soon as I go invisible fly around and fuck the guy up. I think that's the thing to do, right? Just so he doesn't get a, a beat on us. Because he'll run or he'll start casting spells and we're kind of <laughs> up shit's creek at that point. So it might be worth it. All yeah. right, I'm ready. I'm good the to other go. Thing, the other thing you could do is just blind him with that wand or... He could have a saving throw, though. Yeah. What, what do you do? Do, do it. We're going right, to wait till the moment. When the moment has come, the clock, the clock strikes. When the main force is storming down the front, Avaricios is going to go invisible. They're going to pull the, the wall down. I am also going to fly around maybe a couple moments before that mm -hmm. invisibly with my dagger. And I'm going to float over to the fucking wizard and try to cut his throat. Just stealth attack. Invisible right, you know, death. death <laughs> exactly. which, which, not, not to advocate too much for myself, but doesn't even seem like an initiative role at that point, because I'm literally just a yeah, ghost okay. putting a dagger on right. his neck. All right. So you guys are hammering. So you, you guys are now hammering. 
Oh, the order on. of operations. <laughs> Hold on, this is important. Come on, the order of operations is that the the guys are coming down the stairs. When we get to the bottom, that's when Mort triggers the invisibility. Mm-hmm. So when as soon as Avaricius goes invisible, I fly around. You fly around, and once you've left and gone around, we start pulling the wall down. Yeah. Okay. The idea though is that he's not. They're not running to you. Like I'm stabbing the guy's neck at that moment. Right. Is the plan. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> like prior to initiative is what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is your What is your signal to to turn invisible? Oh, that's when Avaricius turns invisible because Mort has just triggered the ring because the mercenaries have entered the debouchement. Got yeah. it. Okay, that's what I need yeah, to know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. That's so what I was getting at. At midnight. All right, you guys are all tensed up. You, you got you got your weapons <laughs> you out. Have no idea. Kind of stuff, right? The <laughs> the mercenary force, the wine dark cohort, is uh, Gorin like calls back. Is like this is the last turn, right? I, I, do you say like lights out basically or something like that, right? Or uh, no, right. our whole goal is to draw their attention and okay. get them to like right. Okay. So I'm actually going to start like I'm going to have them be quiet, but I'm going to start singing a dwarven drinking song about bearded women and tickling their toes, <laughs> and I'm going to be banging my hammer on me like I'm coming for your liquor, and then just I'm just going to march down the stairs. <laughs> okay. Cool. And then. I'm going to come out five feet before them. And then as I am standing in the room, the mercenaries come out with their shields in front of me with the crossbow guys behind them. Gotcha. And I will be attached to one of the footmen. Um, Units, squads. squads. Okay, cool. All yeah. right. All right. Now, uh, Nicasia will attach herself to the other footmen squad. Um, she gives orders for, uh, uh, well, Gorn, you should be given the orders, right? Like Nicasio is basically going to follow you, but um, I tell her what to do. She orders all the men, right? That yeah, was her. I'm just saying, me right? as a DM, I'm not going to do like that. Ta- your tactical side. Yep. Um, so, it. so yeah, you you come down out. You're roaring your song, right? And you, um, uh, you, you come out into the lit room. The statue is before you. And they start mm-hmm. to array themselves out, and you can hear uh, what you hear. This what's all that racket then? And uh, you look across the room, and you see Roz Kelly sort of like just peering through, and her eyes are widening as like more and more men like fall mm-hmm. file out into the debouchement. De- 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 and that bitch. And 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 then John, when I'm standing in front of the shield wall, I hold up Isadora's head. And I heave it at them. Oh, <laughs> <I'm> nice. Like, <laughs> so she's behind the portcullis, okay? Like mm-hmm. that group yeah. is no longer there. They've retreated behind the portcullis. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, and, oh, we uh, didn't catch it any the... of them outside? I thought they'd be curious. Okay. No. Um, is it open or closed, John? It's closed. Like they and were. As, as I yell, as I throw the head, I go, I've come to pay my 10 gold fee. Whip <laughs> Isidore's head over at him. Well, you didn't have to bring all, the, the, the whole blooming lot of them with you then. It's going to be 10 for each of you. I don't know how you're all going to be moving around through the dungeon like that. All right. Shield wall up. Winch and chain coming up the rear. And a cask of oil. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on here? <laughs> she says. Plumthorn, you got to get a load of this. Are you just like moving towards the portcullis right now? Absolutely. We're going to make like- a defensive ring around the portcullis area with the crossbow men behind as soon as they have shots on people even if they have cover through the portcullis they're going to start shooting okay so she's like phlebotomist phlebotomist and she like trucks back down the uh the the, the corridor as as you guys array yourselves around around the portcullis okay um, wake up so wake at, up at this point mort would back up a few feet up the stairs mm-hmm. sit down and go blind <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Your cool. mother John warned is, you about that, John. If yep. they all, all right. retreat from the portcullis, that's when we're going to attach the chain. Two uh, shield wall guys go up. Someone, I'll go right behind them. Hook the portcullis with the with the grapple and the chain. Mm-hmm. Bring it back, and then we're going to start winching that bitch down. Okay. Um, at uh, so we're going to roll for so as they reach. Okay, so you're going to do that the moment they start to retreat down the hallway, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to say like for free. Without initiative, you're going to be able to um, to uh, get your what is it grapples or something like that. Mm-hmm. The yeah. grapple and the chain. Yeah. Okay. So you can you can get those on. Okay. As they retreat back <laughs> at the same time um, as you march through back in the behind the brick wall uh, on weir. Oh, okay. So then then 
Evaristios goes invisible. Yes. Right? Poof. And you know it's go time. And you see, like, all the darlings are like, oh, shit. They pull out their weapons, right? On weird, then you also go invisible? I go invisible, I quaff the fly potion, and I fly through the chasm to go ambush the wizard. <laughs> and I'm Amazing. literally going to be, I'm going to be in the air. <laughs> with it, I'm just going to kind of seek into the back of his neck if I can. Okay, cool. Yeah, so yeah, that's with awesome. my dagger. So yeah, so the two, both on where, so Avaricio's blinks out of existence. On where, like, yeah. whips his head around and sees Avaricio's gone, and he's immediately, like, puts the cloak over, quaffs the potion, right? Um, and then you never see him again. This is your last um, <laughs> <laughs> This is your third invisibility. It's over now. That's the last yeah. you're gonna be able to use Lara, Lara's cloak yeah. for the day. Um, and you, uh, yeah, so you go over the chasm, right? You're flying. You can actually feel like a little bit, a little bit of a draft, right? As you kind of mm -hmm. move over. And indeed, your, your, your uh, mapping was correct. You can see that you can easily just slip over the lip, right? And you, the, the halflings are, there's Blondvig right there. And you just don't even alight on the ground, right? Yeah. You just go right to the neck? No, no. I'm, I go right to the neck. I'm floating through the air. I go right to the neck. Yeah. Obviously, I'm going to become visible the minute I stab him in the neck. Yeah. But then I'm going to fly back out to the castle and go back With to the With his guy. body. Okay. Um, <laughs> I could. I mean, no, okay. it's fine. I'll just keep it simple. You know or what? I could just retreat back and watch them pull the wall down. Whatever simplest after this is done, you know? It yeah, because so we would start because, pulling that wall yeah. as soon as... Yeah, right. Yeah. I wouldn't even make you a moose family rule because you're not touching the ground. You're exactly. Flying. That's what I was thinking, yeah. baby. <laughs> so you are a silent killer. You are literally like an invisible stalker as you just like move around and into the thing and you just insert the dagger directly into the back of Blonde Vague's neck. Um, and at that moment, you appear with the dagger like tip points out he juts out of his neck and he just like he just his eyes go wide and he grabs his throat like that and he just <laughs> he collapses all over his his uh, uh, chemical table spilling all that crap like everywhere just <laughs> glass goes everywhere all the half is like <laughs> rear back grabbing their weapons as you appear um yeah uh you, i'm gonna give you surprise yeah um, I'm not even going to make them roll. They had no idea. Blonde Vague is yeah. dead. You've eliminated the spellcaster. Fuck yeah. yeah. Steven, you're the <laughs> fucking man. <laughs> and, awesome. Okay. Now it begins as we are done. That. So we have the um, the ropes are on the portcullis. The halflings are up in arms. They are all surrounding Onweir right now. Um, and uh, you guys had the signal that Avaricios has gone invisible to bust yeah. through the wall, right? Yeah. So you're banging as hard as you can. Now we're going to roll for initiative. So um, this is the way that it works. Um, it's very similar to uh, to OSC. So uh, we're going to roll initiative for actually um, uh, spell declarations first. Anyone going to cast spells? I am not going to cast a spell right now. Okay. Cool. Uh, just, use, just using a wand count as casting a spell? Um, yes, no, 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 I would say it's probably a missile. Okay. Uh, not, not going to, doesn't matter. Okay. I'll, I'll roll no. initiative first. I got a three. Who's rolling on your end? Ted, go ahead. Ted. Go for you mean it. Yost? Roll Yost. Two, Yost. Yost. Uh... Five. Nice. You guys Sweet. win. Okay. Is this for is this for both groups? Like no. both both us and the main, or just yes, just yeah. The... We're gonna keep it easy. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Okay. Cool. So, so uh, basically, what happens here is is that you have to declare movement. The loser is going to declare first. Uh, so they. Let's see. I have. Um, let's see. Give me a second here. So I've got. Uh, one, one thief, and then I've got. Let me just check my locations here. Sorry, give me a sec. Okay, so I'm gonna have the ones that are around on where they're going to collect themselves into a squad, and they're going to move to just basically eliminate on where, like, yeah, like completely. Um. And then there are other halflings around that are going to do things that you have no idea because you don't know where they are. Uh, what, do you, what is your movement? Uh, what do you plan to do? I'm flying up and out, baby. <laughs> Getting the fuck out of there. 
<laughs> okay. So here's the deal. Dave, uh, is your camera again? Uh, give me one second here. I have. So I'm, just, I'm so powerful at, at invisibility. I don't like to usually use them, but in this case, if you look over an owlbear. Oh, tokens. Yeah. Um, actually, you know what? Uh, everyone just give me one second. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. I've uh, got some uh, tokens on here. I usually don't like to use tokens, but for this squad, uh, squad based combat, I think it will work. So the large tokens indicate um, uh, squads and the small tokens indicate individuals. So uh, PCs are obviously our, our heroes, protagonists. Um, and then uh, the single letter ones are our NPCs. So N is Nicasia, uh, D is Dalton, uh, Dar is the Darlings, okay? Um, WX is uh, Wine Dark Crossbowmen. WI is Wine Dark Infantry. Okay. Uh, R is Roz Kelly. Um, and then HF is Halfling Fighters and HT is Halfling Thieves. Okay. The fighters are the ones with spears. The thieves are the ones with short swords. Okay. Used to be a B up there, but I had to take him off. Oh, because <laughs> oh, oh. okay. David showed him his D. <laughs> okay so that pc in the midst, midst of the two uh the two red ones that that is on okay the pc right before the wall is of course um avaricios um okay and then um i am rolling in samantha and y'all and um and uh leos uh, they're in the darlings unit okay okay they are they are part of that unit though they are not attached as cool. leaders they are literally just right. men in that unit okay cool. um okay so that is the deal. So uh, anyone that is a small token can be attached to a unit, right? So uh, Dalton, the PCs, right. and the KC can all be attached. Okay. Uh, so you so guys Mark want initiative? He'll be sitting on the staircase because he's blind and doesn't want to be in the fight. Uh, who is Mort? Yeah, okay. Mort, Mort. Got it. Not even in that room. He's on the staircase. Okay. Although uh, you could stop you being invisible at this point because squad based combat, who cares? Okay. You so know? basically, this well, is the way it works. What so, Av needs. Okay. Yeah. So it's uh, you're gonna you can move up to your movement rate, your M rate with your units in uh, in ten foot squares. Okay. So uh, your uh, wine dark men uh, have uh, your footmen it. have movement of two, and your crossbowmen mm -hmm. have movement of three. So those are squares basically. Okay. Yep. They can move uh, half of that rounded up in the first part. Then it's missiles and spells, and then you can finish your move after that, and then it's melee. Okay. All right. So you guys won. What do you do? Um, I'll go. I'll go first because mine's easy. So if if I last round was able to attach the grapple and the winch, yeah. then while the shieldmen are providing cover, the crossbowmen are going to be winching down the um, the portcullis to destroy it. Uh, okay, got it. Wait, wait, wait. Say uh, that it, again. I'm sorry. Sure. While if I was last round, I was able to attach the grapples. Yeah. Right. So while the infantrymen are providing cover with their tower shields, uh -huh. one squad of crossbowmen will be working the winch to pull down the portcullis. Okay. The other squad of uh, crossbowmen will be uh, training their weapons down the hallway to provide cover, to shoot at anybody that like sticks their head out kind of thing. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. And I'm attached to one of those infantry units. I don't care which. <clears throat> <clears throat> Oh my god, Albert's so laggy right now. Uh, Presumably, John, the the winch does not actually need to be adjacent to the portcullis. No, no, right. I have a fifty There's... foot length of chain. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. So they're sort of like back here, like this. Okay. Um, got it. Okay. So yeah, you're wrenching that down. And what are the rest of you guys doing? All right. Um, I had an idea. If if possible. Um, I would like to use the uh, rally using charisma for this initial push mm -hmm. uh, so I can um, uh, maintain my invisibility. I, I think I'll just probably do it one turn and go bonk him the next one. But for this one, uh, yeah, if I could rally the darlings, um, is, is that, am I understanding that correctly? I can rally no, that team. You don't need to, to rally them. They're not, they're, they aren't broken. It's only when they take a morale check. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. They're okay. doing okay. they're doing fine. So but if you want to attach their yourself to them and give them a plus one to their A V, you can do that. That's what that's what I'm hoping. Yeah. You want to do that? Okay. Yeah. And then where do you want them and to then, move? 
Well, they need to break the wall down now at this point. Well, the, uh, the wall came down, right? No. Can we get the wall down? Not yet? Well, you're, you're doing that right now, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. So that's, that's what, what this doing. round is. is okay, so the you're breaking down the wall. pulling down the wall. Got okay. It. I, on the, the other wall. hand, I on the other hand have fly 120 movement in any direction up, down, left, right. I'm going to fly up and away back over the chasm because all these guys, I believe, are melee weaponed combatants. Uh, yes, yeah. well, they've got, they got slings, weapons. but they have their melee weapons out. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a, a retreat up and out back uh, through the chasm. Okay, yep, you want initiative, so I'll allow you to actually just yoink right out of there. You're like, see you later, guys. Uh, are, you bringing his, are you bring his body? <laughs> I mean, am I... Yeah, we'll get, it. We'll get it. Can I fly with a body? Is that something that I could do? No. Is that like a strength no. check? No, I didn't think so. Yeah. yeah, I'm not going to risk my life getting stabbed in the neck with a spear for this guy's okay. body. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you can look, move... Look um, but he's always so cautious. You can move back <laughs> without any problem. You still have, like, an action left. Do you want to attach yourself to... Well, actually, you know what? Um, I would say, like, only one leader can attach to a squad. So I want to say that um, uh, Darlings are actually right now being led by Dalton. So Dalton is actually on it, but they're but they're busting down the thing. Okay. The, uh, the Onwear, you're always distracted by shiny things, right? Mm-hmm. Did you notice the opening on the other side of the chasm that has the, the there's like a constructed opening doorway in the wall remember we saw it when we were uh i do I yeah do. but yeah we gotta we should focus yeah <laughs> next time next that time was evil, Ted. That yeah. was evil. Yeah. so okay. the reason i say it is that i say it is that that i was hoping we were going to use that fly potion to access that spot sorry and now you do it now or we're not doing it. So that, that's uh, fine. We can get ropes. We'll get over there. There's, it's not All blocked. Right. I do okay. have one question, though, before we continue. Sorry. What is the duration of this fly? Because the spell is 1d6 plus level. It's it's the, the spell. potion. Oh, well, I, I don't know. Hold on. Uh, give me a Potions, second. old old school, like AD&D was at their cast at minimum level, right? Mm. Yeah. So no, you no, have no. to there's be. A, there's a thing. Hold on a second. Uh, Sorry, I don't want to distract you. There's one. always a thing. It's 1d6 plus 6, which you wouldn't know. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so be careful. Yeah, hang out over the chasm. <laughs> 1d6 plus 6 turns or rounds? Um, Turns. Oh, you're fine. Wow, yeah. you could fly to the moon. Uh, okay. Well, so, I'm, yeah. I'm, all right, so I, let, I let, me, let me keep moving. <laughs> yeah, go, go, go. Yeah. All right, so the uh, the squads uh, that were in the um, the alchemy room, they basically, um, they're just trying to collect themselves, basically. They don't even know what happened, but they do have their weapons out, and they're now ready, and they're looking for uh, enemies. They, um, I'm going to actually roll quickly uh, a d6 to see if they notice um, the wall coming down behind them, even though it is silent. They do. I rolled a one. Okay, so okay. they they can they they don't hear it, but they look and they can see like like chips like flying forward and stuff like that. They're like, "What the? Where's this?" You hear them like, "What? Where's the sound? What the hell's going on? What, 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 what was this guy that just came in to kill Blam? You know, they're like freaking out. <laughs> um, and the, at the same time, you can hear um, a, a hurried discussion coming from the chamber to the far east, um, as it looks like Roz Kelly is uh, talking uh, uh, with Plumthorn. But at the same time, you can see that there is, let's see, one, two, what's their actually movement? Hold on a sec. Their movement is that. One, two, three. Uh, you can hear troops of halflings coming up from the southern chamber. Glad we brought the mercenaries. God, come on, Albert, keep up with me, please. Okay. Um, at that, okay, and that was their movement. Okay, so missiles and spells, nothing's going on there, right? Uh, uh correct. They finished their move already, so now we're in melee, but there is no melee going on, right? Right. Um, so that is basically the end of the round, okay? At the end of the round, the brick wall comes down as you guys crowbar down, just well, actually, it actually doesn't make any sound, just as all this stuff just kind of goes everywhere. Um, and they're kind of freaking out about like, um, the lack of sound. And now we're going to roll for initiative again, please. I rolled a three. Who's rolling? I got it. All right, Gorn. Three. Roll again. All right. Two. Oops. Wah. I rolled an eight. Uh, 
Hey. Okay. Um, so, uh, at the okay, so we're gonna we'll say for dramatic effect, basically that the brick wall comes down at the same time that you wrench the portcullis at the mm -hmm. end of the round. Okay, so the portcullis is is, is yanked off its chain. <laughs> the nice. a huge rending sound. Um, so you guys lost initiative. So you have to declare your movement first. What is what is what are the units going to do? <clears throat> do you want me to go first, guys? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, John, how many units can go down a hallway at one time? One. One unit? Okay. I mean, one one abreast. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Right. So I am going to take uh, my unit down the hallway mm -hmm. with a crossbow unit following directly behind me, followed by another shield unit, followed by another crossbow unit. Okay. All in a line? Yep. Uh, okay. Very good. As far as your movement allows? Uh, yes, and the movement for the uh, as far as the movement for the slowest people is, and movement um, for the footmen it's two, okay, two, and then crossbowmen are three. That's correct. So okay, so we go down to I guess well, do you want me to move them or do you move them? No, you're, you're just declaring your movement because you lost initiative. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, cool. What are the darlings going to do? <clears throat> Uh, we should have uh, the darlings, uh, you know, rush in and kill some halflings. Okay, they're going to run in. Great, very good. Okay, uh, winners are going to, um, going to. Okay, so these guys up here are actually going to retreat, and they're going to meet up with their friends who are going to advance into that intersection right there, and they won, so they are going to go half their movement. Uh, so we've got, uh, let's see, we've got three. Okay, so we're gonna go one, two. Right there, and then these guys are gonna move. Oh my god, Albert, you are killing me. Killing yeah. me. John, if it helps, when I was drawing, I found that I just had to draw and assume it worked and then just let it wait a yeah, second. <laughs> yeah, there's there's an input delay, but you're doing it. Okay, so um, those guys move forward, and then uh, we're going to have... <coughs> actually, no, Plum Thorn and Ross Kelly are going to still kind of hang back in that chamber because they haven't seen their troops yet. And then uh, you guys can move forward. So we've got... Um, we've got uh, Gorn with his, right? Yep. And that's uh what do they got? They got a uh two. Two so they can move half of that, right? Well, okay, we'll just we'll just okay. And then I'll go with them. Uh give me one folk mo moment here, folks, while I move things around. After a brief moment of intense frustration on your GM's part, I have decided to go completely <laughs> fear to the mind and take all tokens <laughs> off. Uh, Albert is just is not keeping up with me, so we're gonna we're just gonna roll with um, complete uh, fear to the mind. So basically, what's happening is, is you've got two units. You've got fighters and thief fighters and thief halflings are going to be retreating from the alchemy room, okay? Um, and then you've got fighters and thieves uh, that are coming up the corridor to the north to meet in the middle of the intersection. Uh, they were coming up from the chamber where you had actually talked to them before and talked about the goblins and all that sort of stuff, right? Plumthorn uh -huh. and Roskilling are hanging out uh, around the corner, away from visual sight um, in the eastern corridor, okay? Uh, uh, they seem to be waiting for their troops to sort of, like, arrive on the scene, okay? Um, as the Darlings basically plow in uh, through, uh, in silence still, um, uh, being led by Dalton and Avaricios uh, and Onweir um, into the room. Um, as the wine dark cohort basically marches full force in a long, basically like basically stacked with shields, crossbows, shields, crossbows, just like marching into the quarter at the same time. Okay. Uh, by the time that the movement ends, no one has met up yet, but, um, and no one sees each other yet. Right. Like the only thing that you see is the Daltons are like, coming through and they see those, those guys retreating. Okay. Um, yes. that's, uh, that's the end of that round. Um, uh, do the PCs, the unattached PCs, do you guys want to do anything? On where? What do you do? I would like to fly 120 feet through the chasm to where the uh, Ross Kelly Plumthorn room is and listen from the corner to hear what they're doing. <laughs> nice. Okay. So you... and, and well, uh, one more thing. Sorry. I would also like to look while I'm doing this to see if they have any ropes fixed for escape. 
and cut them. <laughs> first, 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 I'm going to go to the corner and just listen. I'm not going to go to the ropes yet because okay. I want to announce my presence. So you're just floating in the air, right? Yes. Okay, so yeah. you float down there, and you see that um, Roz Kelly and Plum uh, and Plum Thorn are basically hanging out right here in this corner. Yeah. Okay. Um, you have caught them basically completely unaware. Yes. Right, like they did not have defenses set up. The missive did not okay. get through. Isidore's plan failed. Okay, um, and so they do not. They don't have like um, they, they they have really good defenses, but they do not have like a backdoor plan. Right. Yeah. Because um, they, the exit to the whole dungeon is like in their territory. Right. Sure. So um, so they are talking hurriedly, and you could well they're actually they're actually quiet right now. What they do is is they pull out their weapons. Um, and they appear to be waiting to he- the, like, for their troops to to come into sight. Um, gotcha. So, uh, let's see. You got um, uh, Plumthorn first. Is he dunks a potion mm-hmm. down down his throat? Um, he pulls out a wicked looking um, uh, battle axe, actually, mm-hmm. and he's wearing a chainmail and he has a shield. Um, and then Roz Kelly. Uh, where are you, Ross Kelly? Uh, Ross Kelly is <coughs> pulling out a short sword, and she also has a small vial of green viscous liquid, and she mm-hmm. drips it over the tip of her blade. Yeah. Oh. When so- I, sorry. No, go ahead. When I see this happen, mm-hmm. I'm going to smile ever so gently and whisper upon my hand, Lucas. Oh, and shit. cast blind on them from behind. <laughs> oh shit! Okay. On um, <laughs> uh, or on uh, hit. It sounds like it does both of them. It sounded like from last time. Uh, I, don't I know, actually may have made gone. a mistake with that, but let me just check real quick. A uh, light. Yeah. light well, usually it, does light one, but it's a one target with the spell. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but if it if the wand has different rules, uh, I think John might have just. Uh, I I screwed it up. It should have been That's one right. creature. But only, oh, one, only one creature failed it anyway, so that was that was fine back before. So who do you want to cast right. it on? I think that I will cast it on the person who just poisoned their blade, which is Ross Kelly, right? Ross Kelly, okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna cast it on Ross Kelly, but again, I'm doing it like from the corner of the like I'm trying to not be floating there, but you know what I mean. I'm trying to do it pretty sneakily. Yeah, I got I'm it. Like looking yeah. around the corner, casting, and then kind of ducking back around the corner. Right, got it. Um. Okay, so this is basically like an offensive attack, so this is going to take yeah. away your visibility. After you cast it, here we go with the roll. Oh, he's already, already you won. don't have invisibility. I have no invisibility. Oh, right, that's right. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're just flying. It I dropped forgot, already, I yeah. forgot, yeah. Okay, here we I'm go. I'm just with the flying roll. and trying to be creepy, yeah. Oh, you're creepy. Ooh. <laughs> Nailed mission, it. Mission achieved. All right, so... Uh, I actually have to look that one up. Shizer. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What well, roll? I know Shiza, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I'm I'm sure this is this is probably fine because <laughs> um he can um uh, fly away. <laughs> versus wands. It, uh, let's see. Yes, she made it. Unfortunately, oh, quite all right, quite yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. But the so the Lucas and they're like, what the? And they whip around to the other side of the chasm, but you're not there to be seen. And they're like, what was that flash? Um, focus, just focus, Ross Kelly. Uh, okay. And that was you. Anyone else? No. Okay. Ever uh, the only. Yep. Like I don't know if I can if I can do this, but I want to like take a just like a, a quick look through the room and mm-hmm. see if um, there are any of these uh, uh, potions or vials or things that might be useful. Uh, yeah, so then- there does do seem to be um, uh, some of the green, v- v- like gross looking stuff. Uh, there are still, oh my god, I can't talk. Still appear to be viable. Dude, that's what they used on that goblin, man. You mm-hmm. fucking lob them at their units. Yeah, yeah. So I, w- I would um, just take that turn to to tell the uh, uh, tell the team. Everybody, grab one of these. Coat your blades with it. Coat coat your uh, coat your bolts with it. Okay, that will take a turn to do. 
I mean, like not a turn. I, I mean, like a round. You know what I mean? Like they're gonna have to. Like you will lose a, a round doing that. Uh, I think it might. I mean, I think we're gonna be shooting uh, missiles down this hallway anyway. I think it might be. Uh, Do it. I think it Do might it. be worth okay. it. Yeah. Do yeah. It. They're, they're like, they're, oh, they're like excellent. Yes. This is much. And they, you, you hear the darlings are all like, this is much. But what must they must have been doing? They must have been selling this stuff. What, what is this? This is amazing. And they're like dug, dug it on. Heliogabalus is like very interesting. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, that was the end of the round, right? Okay. Yes. Roll for initiative. I've got a five. Who's rolling? Uh, let's see. I, I'll do it. I haven't done one yet. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you can go up against this five. Good luck. <laughs> uh, two. I mean, I almost got it. <laughs> two. Okay. So, um, uh, what are you? How are you guys going to be moving? I'm going to be continuing to march down the hallway in the same formation, ready to take shots at anybody who comes within range. You understand that your crossbows cannot fire over your infantry. Um, yeah, I was kind of hoping that what we could do is do like shield wall where they plant their shields and have the crossbowmen shooting over the top. So if they duck, yeah. in other words, the first rank, that's fine. I'll buy that. Yeah. The yeah. first rank is their job is just to protect the crossbowmen. At this point, you can get to the intersection. What do you, what do you plan to do if you get to the intersection? I want to I stop right at the intersection. I'm not going out into the middle because okay. that exposes our sides. So, but it will only be that single squad of infantry that'll be in the intersection itself. Correct. So we have a um, single squad of infantry right in the, in, the, in the square, right before the intersection, followed by the crossbowmen, followed by yeah, the shields. I know, but, okay. do you, but you can move. Do you want that first infantry to be in the middle of the intersection? No. Okay, gotcha. Right before, got it. Okay, Yep. cool. Um, and then the darlings are going to be coating their blades, right? Uh, Correct. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, Is uh, it, Avarice is still invisible? You haven't um, attacked anybody, right? No, yes, uh, not. I, correct, not yet. Yeah, so okay. um, uh, free, free unattached PCs. Do you want to move anywhere? So uh, Mort's just going to stay put, put his feet up on the steps there. You know, lean back, eat his sandwich, mm -hmm. just hang out. Can't see I, anything. I, I, okay. I got you. I got you next turn, Ted. I got you. Okay. Um, uh, do we'll, I we'll see rush any, it, You know. Do I see any ropes in the chasm? You see, you know. Okay. No, you, you see uh, the dangling ropes of uh, that were cut before. Okay. Uh, I will probably try the Luke, the Lucos trick again and kind of peek over and cast it again on Ross Kelly. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> all right. So then, um, and then if that fails, I'll I'll run if they start chasing after me. Basically. Okay. So the. They won, however. Okay, so basically oh, what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we were just declaring movement. So the mm -hmm. converged halflings basically meet up, like basically in that intersection, right? So at this point, basically what's going to happen is is that you are going to uh, engage, right? Um, but it, oh, is, yeah. it is narrow enough, like where it could only be one squad against one squad. I'm going to say that one of, so basically I'm going to say like the fighter squad of halflings comes down from the north, rounds that corridor, and basically is like comes up short as your wall is right there with your, with your, <laughs> with your uh, spears, right? Um, and they're like, they just run right, you know. Um, uh, and uh, John, did you, did you say the halflings uh, came up short? <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Um, the, I just wanted to make sure the other ones in the southern quarter are coming are, are right there, right behind, like literally right behind them. However, the thieves from the north are going to go back down the eastern corridor to sort of protect uh, Plumthorne and Ros Kelly. Uh, Plumthorne and Ros Kelly then are basically going to uh, go up to those thieves. Ros Kelly attaches to that squad. Plumthorne moves through them and into the southern corridor is going to attach to the fighter squad that is coming up to the south okay so there is a unaffiliate there is not a not a leaderless squad that is attacking the um the first uh, uh wine dark squad okay that is the one that mm -hmm. gorn is attached to okay so you 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 wait and you just see them come around from the from the north as they kind of plow into you just like and like boom combat um uh there are it is missiles first, however. So mm -hmm. as they round the corner, you can have your guys sort of like have the shield wall there and then just mow crossbows. Crossbows. Yeah. <laughs> so now if if I let me know when it's time to attack, because if I understand this, it is, uh, my it's, attack it's missiles. 
All right, so my attack value is uh, 10 or 4, so I roll a 10-sided. And you if I it. get 4 or under... That's correct. Oh, <laughs> nice. Okay, so you scored a hit, um, mm -hmm. and then what they have to do is they actually have to roll their uh, defense. Um, and their defense, I'll just give it to you, is... Um, uh, these are fighters, so their defense is a three. So I have to roll okay. a three or under. And I did, so the hit doesn't do anything. So there's basically <laughs> like a clash as you guys... Ex uh, well, actually, it's just crossbows. So um, they basically duck. They're really short, right? So they basically <laughs> duck behind your behind your own spearmen before they attack, and your crossbows go basically uh, wide. Okay. Um, so uh, no exchange there. That was missiles. Then the spell goes off. Onweir casts... Uh, that was Lucos, right? Or the... I guess we were saying it's missile face with the same face for this, right? Am I right, David? Do it. Sorry, say that again. I, I misheard. You're doing Lucas. Am, am I doing? Well, I'm going to peek around. They are not. Are they still in range for me to do so? Because I will. Yes. Uh, can I? Can I hit Ross Kelly? You can't do. You can't do Plum Thornton. You can do Ross Kelly. So I'm going to turn. I'm going to appraise the room real quick. No room one's in the, the room. The room is now empty. Yes. Okay. Is there anything? Just real quick. I'll be. I'll be fast. Is there anything significant that I should know about this room now that I'm looking at it? Uh, yeah, check there's here. Wooden with straps, and there's a sarcophagus. Uh, yeah, there's the sarcophagus. Um, uh, there are three of them, however. You only saw the one because of the glance that you had, so there sure. are another yeah. three. Yeah. Um, they're broken and looted. Uh, there are two large casks here, several sides of curing meat, um, several bags of what looks to be dry goods, um, and uh yeah it that's about it. It, it there is a oh but no there is a so there are these open sarcophagi right which are interesting themselves um and then there is a locked wooden chest with iron straps cool a big iron right. lock on it all right so uh nothing changes then i'm gonna go ahead and cast lucos on ross kelly okay here we go she fails it, blinded. Yes. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And she was attached Sweet. to, so she basically was like ordering. She was basically like, "I'm right behind you. I'm a coming." And she's like, "Forward, men!" And uh, she was just like, "Ah!" And she like drops back away, like back towards you. So she's basically like open to attack by you on where she's no longer yeah. attached to that unit. Okay. It, can I see through all of the ruckus, Goran's little little dwarf head through the hallway down down? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Over the halflings, yeah, yeah. Does he see a wild wizard floating in the air? Yes, <laughs> so I'm gonna go. <laughs> yeah, rock and roll. <laughs> okay, that was uh, that was yeah. so. Then um, yeah, so everyone's clashing now. So now it's melee. So now your spearmen like stand up and they attack, right? Yep. Um, wait, no, but you lost initiative, right? Yep. Okay, I so th they get to go first. So the fighters basically are attacking. They have an AV of four. Uh, here we go. They failed it. They are uh, they are unable to land a blow on you. Your turn to strike back. All right, I'm gonna roll ten sided. The attack uh, value for my guys with me attached is six. Uh, six. Six hit. Wait a second. Yours is six. Yeah, because oh, I'm yeah, attached. Yeah, you're right. I got I'm you. attached. Yep, yep. Uh, uh, so I hit it. Oh, so great. roll your okay. defensive value. Yep. Okay. Here we go. Defense value for these guys is a three. Here we go. They fail it. Okay, yes. so that was a halfling fighter, so they're going to take a hit. Okay, so um, they take a hit, so that means they have to immediately make a morale check. Um, their morale is a six. Oh, they fail it. They fail yes. it. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, you get this first blow, but what we're going to say is basically they came around the corner, the crossbows go off and miss them, but they don't even notice the crossbows went off and they basically uh, run right into you, are unable to land any substantial blows because of your shield wall and your spears just come out of nowhere and just like, like draws first blood and like they just start screaming and they basically pull off and they're like, retreat, retreat. And they, they basically are going to um, uh, uh, move backwards as fast as they can back up the northern corner. Okay. Um, right they, into they, the waiting arms yeah. of the dolphins. They, they, don't, they yeah. don't yet, however. They don't yet. That was that was the end right. of the round. So they broke. Uh, nicely done. Um, these guys are broken. I'm just going to write that down. I think we should call this battle the scouring of the Shire. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, that was the end of melee, right? Yes. Okay. Top of the round. Let's roll. F- oh, no. Did we do everything? No. The Daltons didn't do anything. Did Daltons they? Didn't no, they're poisoning anything. their blades. They're yeah, poisoning yeah, their blades. The, yeah, right. they're doing that. Yeah. Poisoning their blades. Right. Um, yeah, actually. Yeah, I think uh, that's everything. I'm going to have. Um, so. Let's see. Helia Gabalus is looking down that corridor. <laughs> and I think he's got a straight oh. line to. Oh. <laughs> he's got a straight line. I should have done this during um, Onweir's roll with the Lucos thing at that, that phase, but it's, we're going to go back and say it, right? So there is um, there is a squad of halfling thieves and fighters coming up from the south, right? Um, Plumthorn is attached to the fighters. He goes, he comes up and he's like, I don't need this liquid. I don't have any blade. <laughs> he's, he kind of steps forward and he's like, and he goes, it's just like a lightning bolt just goes straight down the corner. You can feel all the hairs on your arms like go, like you can smell like ozone as like this thing just goes straight down. Um, and that is going to be uh, for these rules. It's going to be like an automatic fail. They're going to do there. It just mows into them and does two hit to kills automatically on them. Oh, oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> fuck yes. So he's going to do one, and then he's going to do one there. Oh wait, on yeah. where uh, yeah. doesn't know why, but his little heart flutters. <laughs> Okay. I, I hope that Helio was was admiring me while I was doing my shenanigans earlier. And then both of those, um, <laughs> both of those have, have to make, make their morale morale checks. Yep, and they are both at six. So this is the fighters with, with Plumthorn attached. Um, yeah, that is a make. Um, and then the thieves behind him also make it. So they are actually going to stay strong. Plumthorns, Plumthorns hurt, you know, like a little singed um, and uh, definitely like a couple of ha- like a bunch of halflings are actually dead, you know, but the but the units or squads are still formed. Um, and uh, yeah, they're pretty fucking jacked, though. Um, that was an Yvette is going to hold back. She's basically more like a healer sort of thing. OK, cool. End of the round. Uh, now it's uh, that's the end of the round. OK. Initiative. I got a initiative. David, go. I got a three. On where? Five. Five. You guys buddy. win. Okay. Nice. So for their plan, they're they're going to be um, uh, uh. Let's see. Plumthorn is actually going to disengage from his unit that he's on now. He's going to rush up to the. Oh, actually. No. Yeah. He's gonna he's gonna rush up to the intersection, attach himself to the um routing fighters. That got hurt first, and he's going to attempt to rally them. Okay, mm, um, mm. and then the uh, the wounded lightning bolt guys are going to attempt to turn around and meet you in that corridor. Um, yeah, so that's the plan for them. The western one or the northern mm-hmm. one? The western one. Okay. Oh no, wait, no, they saw Dalton. Yeah, they're actually going to charge forward as fast as they possibly can into the northern corridor and meet the meet the darlings. Sorry, just okay. to clarify, what is Ross Kelly, who is blind, doing? Uh. Roz Kelly is. You said they fell out of the the formation because they yeah. were blinded. Yeah, she's basically stumbling around. I think she's going to stumble back into that chamber, basically where you were at. <laughs> Great, love yeah. it. Okay, <laughs> I'm ready. I've okay. got some plans. Okay. Your guys' turn. What do you guys do? You got to move first. Go ahead. Any is there spells first or? Uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, cast a spell. I'm going to take my it's, chance. It, I, it's it's moves moves first though. Okay, I'm just intent. You know, that's my intention. I'm gonna What's cast your intent? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I'm going to cast a spell when I get. Okay. Okay. Uh, so for movement shot, I just need to understand: um, Are there any guys to the south? Uh, in yes. The south. Yeah. Okay. So they're still they're they're, they're they're the lightning charred ones. Okay. So there's guys to the south, guys to the north, but no one went back east to follow Roz Kelly. Uh, no, that's correct. Yeah. Okay, so my squad and the crossbowmen behind me are going to turn to the north and go up that, and they're going to catch Plumthorn and the other people in that hallway. Okay? Uh, So two of my squads are going to the north. The other two squads with Nas and the other crossbowmen are going to turn south and and bottleneck those guys. Okay, cool. Got it. Right. Awesome. Makes sense. Uh, Okay, so, yeah, you do that. Um, Then it's going to be missiles and... Um, missiles and magic. You want okay. your crossbow men to do anything? 
Crossbowmen are going to um, fire at anyone in range, whichever oh. squad is in range. So you could you could so fire ones, you could fire oh, both directions. You could fire both north mm -hmm. and south. Yeah, I'm going to have the one squad fire south and one squad fire north. Okay, cool. Spearmen get hunker <clears throat> down. Uh, so cool. go for it. Oh, okay. Um, crossbowmen. Sorry, I was oh, expecting some else. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, no one is attached to these crossbowmen, so their attack value is four. Okay. So the northern one is a ten, uh, no joy, and then the southern one is a eight, no joy. No good. Okay. Uh, spells. All right. Um, I also know a spell. Um, I'm going to cast. <laughs> I'm going to try my mind. I'm going to cast light on uh, Plumthorpe, who's coming up the hallway. Okay. Very good. Uh, nice. You try to blind him. Here we go. He makes it, unfortunately. He's like he's pretty oh. high level, I think. I he, know he, it, it's it's a chance, but mostly he sees it gets you moving your fingers, basically, or like praying or holding forth your holy symbol. Yeah. Like he just puts his arm across his eyes as he moves forward. Ah, yeah. it's it's fine, but uh, Mort, you can Mort see. wakes up. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Uh, okay, so I'm losing I'm losing the thread here. So um, that was the. Uh, spells. spells. That was spells. Yes. Um, uh, and David then... never declared either. Yeah, I didn't have a chance. I, I have something I'm going to do, but yes, go ahead. Yep. <laughs> okay. I'm flying. I don't make noise while I fly. Ross Kelly is blind. What am I going to do? I'm going to fly real quiet, like up to Ross Kelly and slowly slide a dagger into her neck. <laughs> I, I can't argue with it. I can't find any reason for that not to happen. <laughs> you, you end Ross Kelly. She's just like stumbling around, like basically yelling out, like, where is everybody? What's going on? I can't see. Like, <sighs> I oh my God, dude. Can we just see like floating in the, in the, in the, the camera of this world, the Ross Kelly kind of like, whips around and I'm just sitting there smiling and I just sort of <laughs> yeah, <real gentle. laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ryan. David at least whisper to her as she goes, you know, the A D club says hello uh, or yeah. you should have thrown me a rope. I'll say consider this negotiations, Ross oh, Kelly. Nice, <laughs> nice. Oh. <laughs> This is how the AV club negotiates. Yeah, nice. Sick. I'm glad we sent the evil guy with the po with the fly <laughs> spell. <and> the <laughs> okay, uh, that was awesome. Um, so they, um, okay. Uh, let's see. I I'm losing track of where everyone is. Okay, um, that's okay. This should be melee, right? Yeah, um, but I'm trying to think if they should be better off at pulling out their slings. A couple of them. Um, so yeah, so I think if we got like basically fighters up front and then, uh, thieves behind in both the Northern and Southern quarters, right. That's basically what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, I think the thieves are actually going to, um, sheathe their swords and they're going to pull out their slings, um, in the Northern quarter and they're going to attack, uh, the darlings with their slings. Um, and then the... Uh, the other thieves are going to pull out their... Yeah, they're, they're going to do the same thing. So the thieves are, are just going to ex exchange weapons. The fighters, however, are going to move forward with their spears and engage, right? So we've got the ability to attack two of the of the wine dark, right? Um, uh, yes. They can either turn around and attack the... The northern guys can turn around and attack the wine dark coming up from the south, yep. or they can attack the doll, the darlings and to the north of them. But there's also the guys in the southern corridor as well, which can also... The that's southern what corridor guys are attacking Nas's uh, <laughs> unit. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, so it's basically going to be infantry versus infantry, like foot, uh, okay. fighters versus fighters. Um, here we go. So we're going to do southern first against um, against Nicasia. Um And we have a AV of four. Here we go. Boom, boom. That's a hit against Nicasia. Um, okay. Well, can I ask a question real quick too? Yeah. Um, we want initiative. My archers got the attack, but my infantrymen did not. Your infantrymen. You want initiative. I'm sorry. I, I, I thought I won. Yeah. Yeah. It's you first no. then. It's your okay, first. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. So then my fighters that I'm attached to that are attacking the um, uh, the dudes in the Northern Corridor. Okay, cool. Go okay. For it. So um, attack value with me attached is six. 
And, ooh, I rolled a 10. Balls. Okay. No Southern Fighter unit, their attack value is five. Oh, no, it's six because they have Nas attack attached mm-hmm. to them. Yep. Four. Hit. Hit. Okay. And I've got, um, uh, right. Okay. So, yeah. Here we go. This could be, they make that? No, their they defense value it. is three. They failed it. That was Fuck a yeah. fighting unit. Oh, okay, <clears throat> cool. So that was the... Was that the already broken one? No, that wasn't the broken one. That's the one that... Okay, so... But you... Because of the lightning... But these are the lightning bolt hit ones, right? So um, you mow into them with your with your spears and they're already just trying to recover from the from being seared by the lightning bolt and they just basically collapse under the weight of your shields and spears and they are out of the fight um Ooh, nice so we're Sweet. gonna we're going to look what um that's going to mean so we're going to roll a d4 on this chart that i have here i mean a d10 um five okay so yes Basically, you killed two of them, and the rest are severely injured. And combined with a lightning bolt, I'm going to basically say like you slaughter them to a man, so they're they're gone, right? Um, uh, so uh, you have eliminated one of their units, which is amazing. There are three left. Okay, uh, then the other you missed with the other one, right? So now it's their turn. Yes, right. Now Plum, it's their turn. Yep. Plumthorn's going to attempt to uh, rally the uh, the routed troop. He's rolling. Do the do uh, Dalton's guys get to do their melee? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a little chaotic. My my fault. Um, <clears throat> You're good. No, no, no. Yeah. It's, there's a lot going on. Yeah. So yeah, the darlings. Let's have them go. Um, you want to roll for them, uh, Avaricios? Uh, sure. So okay, they're going to plow so into the thieves there, who are trying desperately to pull out their slings as fast as possible, but are not uh, in time. Yeah. So uh, Dalton's darlings. Their uh, AV is eight. But wow. they have a nine. They have a nine because Dalton is attached. Oh, okay. Okay. So we're trying to roll a nine or under. Nine or under. That's all it takes. Right. Yeah, they're an adventuring party. They are not mercenaries. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay, you hit, nice. and then the thieves are going to roll their defense, and their defense is a um, a three as well, and they fail it. Does the uh, uh, the green stuff on the blades do anything, John? Oh, right. They had the. Oh my goodness. Dalton's have a hit to kill a four. So you um. Wow. That means they can get hit four times. Oh, that means they can get hit four, right? Yeah. Right, yeah, right. yeah. So, right. uh, yeah. So they basically, you 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 attack with, with all their bladed weapons, and they um, you can see that thieves like when they see that the that the Dalton's weapons are coated with uh, with this stuff, they you can see them like visibly shrink away from it, which allows you to get the hit in. Um, and as they as you slice and dice them, they're like no, like they're screaming like no. Nothing seems to visibly happen immediately, but you can tell that they know that something just like horrible happened to them, other than the wounds that they've just suffered. No, oh, I feel guilty now. <laughs> They're just, they're just you, Mr. Like, no, Flying no. Stabby Guy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, um, I'm gonna I am them. a man of God, and I do yeah, not care. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have them make a, a morale check, uh, which they make somehow. I don't know how. <laughs> but they, but they make Because they basically have resigned themselves to death, basically. Um, uh, you know what? Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rule it. I'm going to rule it. With the knowledge that what they have in their veins now is a sentence of death in their minds, they are going to, um, they basically like throw down their weapons and they just are, they just like give up completely. Like they're just, we're, there's no fight in them anymore. They just know that they're, they have a, well, you know what? If they knew that they were going to die, then they would want their vengeance. Never mind. They're yeah, going to, they're right. going to get yeah, 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 yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was Dalton's and now it's um, their turn, right? Yes. Okay, so rally check for uh, Plumthorn for his broken troops. He makes it, no problem. They are rallied, and um, they are going to fight back. Uh, so, uh, right. So, I'm going to have the guys that got um, poisoned are going to maintain their short swords now that they're engaged, um, and then we're going to attack. So we have thieves against Daltons. We have um, fighters against. Uh, Wine dark, yep, and uh, and fighters well, against wine dark to the south. Uh, thieves Plus, against thieves against because uh, you you eliminated one of them as they oh, move up. Right, right. Yes, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so they are actually going to attack from missile range and attack. Uh, so let's do that first. So missile. Um, they're going to use slings. And, and this, this is the, the 
south ones. These are the south ones. So this is against uh, Nicasius, right? Nas, Nicasia, yeah. Yeah, okay. So let's see. We got uh, range one. That will work. And we've got an AV of five. Here we go. Uh, they make it. So you need to make a DV. Uh, yep. Uh, DV for the footman is uh, four. Oh, yep. they fail. Oh, okay. They fail. So that was a footman. That's Nicasia. This is Gorin. And so you're going to take one. And I need them to make a morale check, please. Okay. Their hit to kill, by the way, is uh, three. Yep, I got so it. So now it's down to two. Okay. And uh, morale check is a seven for them. Yeah, you guys got good morale because they're trained. Yes, they make it, I think. You want to roll high yeah. or low? Nope, low. Yep, you got it. Roll a okay, two. Perfect. So they, they are able to maintain good order. Not a problem. A couple of them are hurt a little bit from the uh, from the slings. Um, and then the uh, ones to the north are basically going to attack Dalton's darlings, right? Um, here we go. Oh, they hit the darlings. Uh, let's roll Ooh. the darlings um, DV, please, Avarisios. Uh -huh. Okay, the DV is a three, but it should be a four now because he's attached. Is that correct? No, no it's, it's only, only oh, it's just the only AV. Okay, yeah. okay. Here we go. Oh, failed it. Out. Okay, the darlings are going to take a hit. Yo, oh no! As they have nothing left to live for, they attack with berserker rage against the darlings. They're going to bite your kneecaps. Mm. Okay. Um, they got to make a morale check too. Oh yeah. What's the uh, uh, Dalton and Starling's morale check? Nine. <laughs> Nine. Okay, here we go. I will do this. Uh, let me clear that one. Let's clear the old one out. Here we go. Oh, no, 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 no. It's like rolling 12 of them. Hang on, hang on, hang on. You want me to roll? No, 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 I got it. I got it. I don't know how to clear that out, though. Yeah, you roll it, because it's going to roll four of them, and I don't know why. One. They make it. Yeah. There you go. Okay, let me take order. Uh, okay. Mike's going to roll for me every time now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. And then we have the ones that are um, facing... Attack Plumthorn. Hmm? Yeah, Plumthorn is going to turn... Yeah, he's going to attack uh, the one that's with you, right? Yep. Okay, yep. Here, here we go. Boom. Boom. They make it. They roll a one. Yes. Um, All right, so our defensive value is four. Yeah. Oh, ouch. Okay. Uh -oh. Okay, no you took one. Up. They took one hit. Okay, so they're down to you two. You got to roll to see if I die, I think, right? Huh? No, no, no. Don't you have to roll? No, you're not, out of, you're not out of the fight. Oh, okay. Yeah, <clears throat> but you do need to make a morale check. All right, and the morale check is a seven, right? Wait, didn't I just fail? Did I just fail that? No, I didn't. Oh, that was the defensive value. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, all uh, oh, seven is just that a, hit it. Yep, yep. You oh, made it. Yep. You didn't break. Okay. That's good. Okay, and I think that's everybody, right? Um, Plum turns attached. Uh, Mort. Mort. Go, Mort. Mort. Go, Mort. Mort. There's a cask of oil and two donkeys there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it sounds like a party. <laughs> the, the temptation to just start pouring, pouring the oil down the uh, down the hall and go back to Gosterwick with all the money. <laughs> <laughs> But I am a goblin of law, not a goblin of chaos. So we're not going to do that. Uh, John, my guess is that Mort can't move through the melee that's already there. No, but you could take control of one of the um, uh, crossbow. Um, that's, that was my next question. Yeah. I can get up and take control of a crossbow group. Yep, you sure can. Right? Yep. Yeah, so he will, uh, he will uh, do that. Um, and at the same time, he is going to activate his ring to give Avaricius, uh, the, uh, the shield spell. And what does that do to you? Minus two to my AC. Ah, uh, okay, cool. Well, Avaricius, you have shield up. Pretty genius, actually. He's actually in melee, so I figure he needs it. That's nice. cool. And Avaricius is still invisible. <laughs> no, oh, no, 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 I, I, oh, no, I cast right. a spell. So yeah, not, yeah. spell. Yeah, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. I gotta look up the shield so, spell. Okay. So yeah, I'll take him command of a group of archers uh, that I cannot see what they're shooting at because I'm so short. Very so good. this is great. I got you everybody right. take control right? of the north one or the south one, Ted? North one um, is against Plum Thorn. South one is against um, like the last band of uh, thieves down there. I I, I I do hate Plum Thorn. We better control Plum, the Plum Thorn killing ones. Okay. I love that. Yeah. Okay, okay cool. Uh, that was it for the round, right? We're done? Yep, we're okay. done. I rolled a... Four for initiative. Who's rolling? I, I got it. 
Six, bitches. Yeah. Very nice. That is how you do it around here. Okay. Um, so the, the 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 ones who have given up all hope are going to uh, continue to engage with the darlings. Um, Plumthorn is... Uh, God, what is he going to do? He's in bad ways, what he is. Um, he's going to keep pressing the attack... Um, yeah, let's see. What would he do? No, you know what? He's going to, he's going to disengage. He wants to disengage. He's going to move to the North and try to back up the guys who got poisoned. Um, and, um, and then the thieves to the South are what there are. They are, they're going to close. They're going to close with, um, with the infantry coming into the South. So they're going to go okay. up there this way. Okay. Um, you guys won. So go ahead. Uh, okay, so um, we're going to continue. My guys are going to continue pushing forth north, so the fighters will attack the guys right in front of us, their fighter group. And then the south one, Nic uh, Nicosia, is going to keep on fighting the... They're going to do what they're doing, John. Okay. Right, so um, so I'll roll for the, my fighter group, which is... Uh, Wait, we do missiles first and then Oh, yes, you're right. Thank you. Yep. Ted, shoot them in no, the face. I don't think there's any further spell casting that's going to go on on our side, right? Not unless Helio uh, Globius is going to do it. Not yet, no. Uh, on this side, but yeah, Helio might. All right. So the uh, um, yeah, Helio Gablis is going to cast a uh, slow. Nice. Oh, nice on us. <laughs> on the poison, on the poison sure. guys. Uh, okay. On the poison guys. Okay. <laughs> so that actually happens second. Okay. So the thing, first thing that happens is a missile attack. On the group that's got Plumthorn in it before he can disengage from that. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is human crossbowmen have an attack of five if I'm attached to it. Yes. Yep. I rolled a three. Very nice. And so that is very good. I'm going to roll their defense. And they fail. Yeah. So that is what I like nice. to hear. Nice. Okay, so here's this is important because they are out of the fight. Plumthorn is right. attached. Yes. I'm rolling a D10. I rolled a seven. Okay, so that is a, okay. So Plumthorn's okay. Um, I know you're happy to hear oh, that. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> I was worried about him. Uh, but um, one to two members are killed, and the rest are severely injured. They cannot fight. They are no longer a uh, a unit of any sort. They are basically done. Um, Plumthorn is now unattached. Um, as you uh, you just basically rain down terror on. They're just <laughs> um, they're just like, <laughs> and they just pepper the ground, um, slam against the wall, and Plumthorn's like Aye! and he like whips around to the northern quarter. He's going to attach himself to that uh, to that dying unit. So there are literally only thieves left. Well, can I ask you something, John? Yeah. I can detach myself from the fighters and attack Plumthorn directly, right? Uh, yes, you certainly can. Yeah. Or what happens? Because he hasn't he still doesn't have a chance to join that other group. What happens if my fighters attack him as an individual? Uh mm. it basically is not like really an option. Like he's gonna turn that corner and like basically you know what I mean, like gonna be protected by those swords. Like just abstractly, it's it, it's not gonna happen. Okay. Right. Yeah. What do you guys think, man? Should I hook a hay and go after him, or am I going to die? <laughs> uh, you might you die. Do it, it'd be fun. I mean, you it's did drink that potion, but you know, we're gonna we're gonna try to kill him from afar. So yeah, go ahead. But Have I fun. mean, it's it, yeah, but it's it's like this is the smart thing is to just keep letting the soldiers do their thing. All right. right. Yeah. Here's the thing, Mike. Is I know dwarves love to to get into the fight, but dwarves also love orderly mass combat. Yes. Okay. Be Ted, like a dwarf. Yeah, Ted, you're you're my hero. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Never mind. Okay. Okay, so where are um, we? I, I'm totally I'm lost. Do, now. It, it's uh, go ahead, David. Just because it's less exciting than the combat. In the midst of this chaos, yeah. uh, knowing that we agreed to split treasure with the Daltons and knowing no one's paying yes. attention, I'm gonna start pocketing anything that looks interesting from Ross Kelly I can. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> so we don't have to go through the full list if that's too tedious to you right now, but I just want to like I will leave weapons and armor because it'll be really obvious that I took it, right? But like yeah. anything else, I'm I'm fucking stowing as fast as I can. Okay, so you basically stow two things. Both of them are potions. Um, okay. One appears to be an empty vial, but you see like the slight motion of something, some sort of ether in there, um, and the other one appears to be a vial of that green gunk. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, okay. Did, yeah, go go. Go ahead. Sorry. 
Uh, nothing like really special about uh, her clothing or anything like that, right? Like she's not wearing a mystical looking cloak uh, or anything. Unfortunately, not. I'm no. Okay. No, it's yeah. okay. I just, just okay. That's it for me. Yeah. Take her. It, take her fucking head. Uh, okay, I can so, do that. Oh, can I actually use? My, I'm sorry. Can I use my movement to go to the wooden chest, and then that's pretty much my turn, I think. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. During this phase as well, uh, the missile and uh, spell phase, um, Healy Gablis is going to cast slow on the one that Plumthorn is attempting to attach to, and he does. So he's like, and then you just see like lethargy sort of hits these guys. It's going to have their AV and their movement. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Oh. Uh, so uh, actually, um, Av would like to take um, a missile attack. He's going to use Shrieker. Oh, so um, uh, and actually, it might be kind of funny. This is the first time we're using Shrieker, but he's in the you know he's in the back with the thief who has the silence on him. So even though he's using Shrieker, <laughs> it's completely silent. So he'd like right. to take a a shot at uh, Plumthorn. Oh, okay, cool. Very yeah, fun. yeah. So it's Love just like that. a normal Love sling, that. like a magical sling, but yeah. You yeah, that. and yeah. Uh, so Shrieker has a plus two. I have a minus one for missile, so it'll just be a plus one. Okay, go for it. All right. Um, I'm, I am going to say that there is a little bit of cover because of all the scrum going on. So I'm going to give sure. you. I'm going to give you a minus two. Okay. Here he goes. <laughs> uh, okay, you? that's not great. That's a six. Yeah, unfortunately, that just goes wide. Right over the head. Bounces yeah. off Warren's helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Watch out. Uh, this is not usually my thing. Uh, and then, okay. <laughs> back up a little bit. Uh, All right. So now it's melee. Um, so. Uh, Northern group, Southern group. Northern group is. Go, is it. Uh, Northern group is attacking the darlings, right? Yep. And that's the uh, poison group with Plumthorn. Um Okay, so they now have a uh, thing of six. Here we go. Well, wait, doesn't wait, Plumthorn? John, are we we won, first. right? Yeah. yeah. Huh? It's our initiative, bud. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. You're good. You're good. Yeah. So uh, my northern group is going to attack the um, Plumthorn group from behind. From behind. Okay. So, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, and that is a attack value six, and I hit. Nice. Okay. They're going to roll their defense. Um, and their defense is a failure. Oof. Okay. So they normally would have had to make a morale check immediately, um, even though they've already been hit because you attacked from the rear. However, mm -hmm. that hit actually put them out of commission, um, out of the wow. fight. Uh, so we're going to give that a D10 roll. Uh, same thing. So uh, Plumthorn <laughs> escapes that one as well. So they, um, the, a couple of them are killed, or some of them are severely injured. Um, as your guys just plow into them from the back and just slaughter them wholesale, you basically caught in a sandwich between the darlings and um, and the wine dark. And it's basically just um, as the other as they're moaning in a heap of like mangled bodies. Plumthorn is also <laughs> himself, <laughs> and, and he's just like in between all of you, and he just takes his blade and he just drops it. Like in, 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 you know, between the darlings and and uh, the wine dark cohort in front of you, and he just he doesn't even say where, just holds up his hands. Up to uh, you guys. We said no prisoners during combat, so that's nice. Okay, southern yeah, southern one. Quick question. Southern, yeah. southern attack thing, and and Nicasia has this group, so their attack value is also six. Okay. And it's a six, so it's a hit. Okay, great. Uh, I'm roll. Oops, uh, reset. Clear. Well, roll. Ooh, I think they may have got it. Let's check. No, here. their defensive value is three. Nope. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Um, <laughs> yikes. Mike. Mike is in his element here. <laughs> Dude, this <laughs> Mike is so back happy. all my fucking battle tech and all the war games. I'm like, nah, uh, you're you can't turn fast enough to hit me, nah. Because <laughs> they, they, they were already been hit. Um, so they fail. So you're just gonna do you're gonna do a hit. So they basically have one left. Morale okay. check, maybe. Uh, so they've already been hit, so they don't need to make a morale check. However, I am going to make them make one because they are literally the only troop left. And they, they can kind of survey what's going on, and they're like, fuck. Uh, so their morale is six. Here we go. And they fail it. Okay. So at this point, as you're, as the wine dark infantry basically mows into these guys from both the north and the south, um, uh, the, the the thieves in the southern end basically drop their weapons as well, and they they basically we yield we yield, it's yours it's yours, and 
uh, you see Plumthorne just kind of hangs his head in shame. He's got like blood dripping from like a shallow cut on his head, you know, and, and the darlings are like pressing forward to basically rend him limb from limb. Um, the darlings got hit, right? So there's a couple of these guys that are actually like wounded. We don't have to roll to see if any of them got killed because they weren't out of commission, but you know, they did some damage and no one's really happy about it, right? Um, meanwhile, Whoa. the the deadly assassin from nowhere is just, <laughs> <laughs> is just cool as a cucumber. They're just picking over Roz Kelly's body that's bleeding out. <laughs> is there any time, uh, feel free to say no, is there any time in the surrender process for me to snoop at that chest before everyone's on top of me? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> okay, uh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, the chest, okay. Um, okay, the chest is locked. Oh, fuck. All right, well. There's that. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. But you're, you're at the chest. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. this is my question to you guys. Um, they are. Uh, you have. You have one troop that has one hit to kill left. Um, one hit point left, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. But they are whole. They are surrendering. And then you have Phlebotomus himself, who is surrendered in between uh, two squads to the north. Do you want to continue? No, no. And slaughter far, right? Oh, oh, god! I, I didn't even. Yeah, I thought Phlebotomus was a totally different dude. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we can end it here. You have you are victorious, or do you want to? Do you want to really end it? No, Who's we got we got to find out Sorry. information, man. Yeah, we'll I don't. I don't want to kill. I don't want to kill the prisoners. But John, I push my way through the shield thing with the with the needle like in my hand, in my shield, and I hold it up to his uh, throat, and I go on your knees, filth. <laughs> I'd be like. You're a bad businessman. <laughs> he, he's like completely defeated, just looks up to, at you with like a burning hatred in his eyes, but he knows when a battle's lost, like he's not going to, he's yeah. not going to like spit in your face. He just, he gets down on his knees like resentfully and just hangs his, his long, lank hair like down, you know. Um, Mort's uh, right behind uh, Goran and he's like, psst, psst, Goran, and in a fake stage whisper, ask him if he'd like to negotiate. <laughs> uh, I, I, I snatch his battle axe up off the ground. I look at it. I hand Mort the the needle. I say, "Oh, thank you." <laughs> cool, John, John. Sorry to be a bad player. Who's Phlebotomus again? I'm confused. Phlebotomus Plumthorn. That's same oh, guy. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You sorry, had the same right. thing going on that I did. I was like, "Who?" I was like, "Wait, there's another guy." I'm so okay, so okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the the wine dark cohort basically under Nicasia is going to basically um, uh, uh, disarm the remaining squad hmm. and tie them up as you guys take care of Plumthorn. I mean, he's, and he just is like, "I was just trying to make a living." And this is what you bring to my doorstep. Very well. Um, Dalton basically just backhands him across the, you know, he, says, <laughs> he goes, your living is now my living. He says. <laughs> <laughs> these, these little, all these little pallets in the areas in sarcophagi, they're all mine now. <laughs> so take That's a last good. look, Plumthorn. Um, so you guys have won. won. Oh, uh, sorry, you, you have won the scouring of the Shire. You have your vengeance scouring against the them. Fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, ah. We have done a very long episode, but I think it was uh, very well worth it. Thank you guys for oh, all staying gosh. up, especially yeah. us East Coasters who are way past our bedtime. Way um, past our bedtime. But I think totally we should, worth it. I think we should uh, definitely stop it here and pick it up with how you what you plan to do with Plumthorn and the prisoners oh afterwards. Um, but uh, so, you have done so much pain. You have regained. Oh Sorry, it's oh. a little bit chaotic. I think those were, those rules work pretty well, though. They were great. The rules yeah. were fucking phenomenal. They were like yeah. amazing. I, tight, I would yeah. play a whole campaign of that. I think what um, <laughs> it would have been like if if Albert would have been able to keep up with the movement of the tokens fluidly, I think the tokens would have really helped in that battle of her position. Yeah. It just got a little bit chaotic on my end, uh, with just having to kind of visualize everything in my head. Uh, but uh, still, I thought, I thought it was fun and fair and, uh, you know yeah john and phenomenal job man yeah that was, nice that was, job. Guys had a lot job. going yeah. on and it was really yeah. really awesome yeah very very yeah. a very, nice very job to all of you guys for what a great plan yeah what an amazing plan that was it was yeah. awesome can i go to helio goblins a little bit and be like i got two of them how many did you get <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> the, like, less and, thing. and he, he basically 
he, he smiles at you, Riley, and he's like, that was, that was very well done. But then he sort of like sweeps with his robe and he just gestures to the to all the body. <laughs> we have many secrets that you and I should share. <laughs> Once we get to it. You need to go get that fucking dude's spell book. That book oh, yeah. no, no, I know. Yeah, that's Listen my first to the goal. dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Nice. All right, guys. So we'll leave it there. That was very fun. Congratulations on the big victory. That was awesome. Uh, so uh, thank ooh, you guys amazing. all for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, and uh, everyone have a great week and we'll see you yeah. next time. Don't forget. Oh, well, of course, you've been watching 3D6 down the line. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and spread the word yeah. about the awesome stuff that you've been watching. And we will see you next time. Have a great night, everybody. Take care. Bye now. Later, Bye -bye. everyone. Thanks, John. Thank you, John.